we are there live and direct once you click there you you once you open the platform the website you click to radio biafra rbl radio biafra london live and you'll be listening you'll be hearing us also you can go to paypal section in order to donate and give to support what we are doing no amount is too big no amount is too small go to paypal and donate moreover you can download ipob community radio what you can do to people the, one of the best things you can do to people is if somebody that doesn't say he doesn't hear radio Bia, but they have smartphone he doesn't listen to radio biafra please tell him you are carrying radio biafra in the hand but you don't know go to play store and download for the person in his phone these are efforts all these things are different efforts to this struggle you can contribute it by downloading for people in their own telephones in their own smartphones ipob community radio is a very low data consuming application and in addition to that you can you will also download simple radio simple radio download it inside simple radio once it's downloaded now you search for radio biafra london you can also be listening through there also in different social media you can be listening via social media different parts of social media you can be listening to us live therefore once again let me repeat do not forget that we are here live and direct Today is the 17th day of July 2024. Why I'm repeating this is for people to understand that we are live and direct. Therefore, we must continue until Biafra is restored. On your boss, on there. That is what we are, who we are. We don't run. We don't abandon. We must continue. That is it. Therefore, before I continue, I will read IPOB press release of 17th of July 2024. IPOB press release of today. Avert the gathering storm and release Mazen Namde Kano as his health deteriorates. IPOB. The global family and movement of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB led by the resolute leader Mazen Namdi Okuchukukano once again call for the unconditional release of our leader, leader from DSS solitary confinement over his deter deteriorating health condition. The Nigeria government is intentionally provoking IPOB by refusing to release our leader even when the Nigerian and international courts have ordered for his unconditional release. IPOB wishes to reiterate that the life of our leader, Mazin Amdekano, is in danger in the solitary confinement of the DSS in Abuja. We have persistently called on the Nigerian government to release our leader as both international and local law institutions have ordered for his release. Many prominent Nigerians, religious, traditional, and the political leaders, including 50 members of the national assembly have equally called for his release but the tinibu government has refused to listen to the voice of reason by refusing to release mazen amdekano just like his notorious predecessor saw the government of buhari tinibu's government has discontinued similar cases of terrorism and treason charges against two Yoruba activists and a Fulani militia leader, militia leader. In the case of an Igbo man, unarmed freedom activist, Mazin Namdekano, this same Tinubu's government have vehemently refused to release him. Mazin Namdekano had subsisting local and international judgments that ordered for his release. Unlike the other cases discontinued by the federal government without any court judgment, we are enumerating all, all these injustices to demonstrate that the federal government of Nigeria is intentionally provoking the anger of IPOB and Ndebo. 
IPOB has maintained a non-violent approach in the Biafra struggle, irrespective of the high-handedness of the Nigerian government against Biafra activists. Mazin Namdekano is seriously sick and must be released unconditionally from the SS solitary confinement for him to treat himself before something unpredictable and unimaginable happens to him. Mazen Namdekano's health is going down every day under the SS solitary confinement because of the nature of his health issues. IPOB is calling on President Bola Ahmed Tinibu and his Attorney General Fatai Fabimi again to release Mazen Namdekano so that he can go and treat himself before it's too late. Mazen Namdekano and IPOB members have been persecuted for over a decade by the Nigerian state by the Nigerian state because of Biafra's self-determination. Mazen Namdekano was kidnapped and extraordinarily renditioned to Nigeria and has been detained in solitary confinement for over three years. Although no court in Nigeria has found him guilty, yet he is being persecuted by the tribal bigot government of Nigeria. President Ahmed Bola Tinubu, please note that Mazen Amdekano is sick and something terrible can happen to him if he is not released. Nothing must happen to him in the DSS solitary confinement in Abuja. As John F. Kennedy said, those who make peaceful change impossible will make violent change inevitable. Comrade Emma Powerful, Media and Publicity, Publicity Secretary for the Indigenous People of Biafra. We are calling once again for the release of Mazen Namdekano. He is sick. He is sick. Mazen Namdekano has been released by the Nigerian court since 10th of October 2022. But the Nigerian government said no, that they are not going to release him. It doesn't matter what happens, he must be released. That is the bottom line. Therefore, we are not going to continue saying, giving warning that this and that, uh, you know, but uh, Mazen Namdekano must be released. That has been our stand and we continue. Therefore, we must continue what we are doing. The restoration of Biafra is sacrosanct, highly sacrosanct. I say highly sacrosanct. That is why we are here. Therefore, we must continue in what we are doing. Therefore, before I go into the discussion or the submission, today's submission, I want to just go to a few, reading few news headlines. Few news headlines. Just hold on one second. I'll be right back. My people, on a well done, no. Obodo Ninja don't carry sensors, boss out though. Or ya bring your ear close, make me yan. Anywhere you day, if na Biafra you be. Whenever they won't count sensors for Nigeria, Kukuma come back to Biafra land though. Make them count you in your own land. Because during election, they killed us in the north and Yoruba land. And now them still talk say we not get right to vote in their land. So time don't come, make we boast our population. And if you no fit return, sell and get for your house. Make you no participate because them go add on a number for the region where we na day. Another one be say, if you dare not and your tribe no be full and eh, when you won't fill the form, identify your tribe. No go right full and eh, it is very important. In this census, if Biafrans go come back like tomorrow no day, them go no say we plenty for this Obodo Ninja where we day so. We go use this census exercise to ascertain our population and the size of amenities where we need in Biafran territory. Remember, oh, every obstacle where we get for this freedom, IPO be done they dismantle and small small. And this population census go be another evidence to that effect. All hail Biafra, Biafra will hail you. Welcome back. This is Radio Biafra House of Service coming to you through Radio Biafra London. Today is the 17th day of July 20, 
24. Therefore, as I said, I will go into just a few news headlines before going to the subject matter of today. Um, let me start with this. Kidnappers. Kidnappers attack a Rufai estate in Abuja. Shot, shoot resident. Exchange a fire with policemen in Abuja. The, now, what I want to ask is this. All this insecurity, even in Abuja, exchanging fire with well, policemen. Do you have any any houses being burnt now? Do you have or do you see police and military being deployed to go and kill any person they can see? These are, you know, we 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 make sure to bring you to reason. Are you hearing me? We want you to reason because we have logic. Superior argument is on our side. If it's in Biafra land, they will, because of this, render lives of people in that area unbearable. But it's, it's in Abuja. So, uh, nothing. Insecurity is everywhere. Even in Abuja, remember Abuja is the capital of that zoo called Nigeria. Okay, let me go to the second news headline. Nigeria police arrests inspector for robbery in Kogi, leading gang of car snatchers. You see what we have been shouting, IPOB, we have been shouting on about this in our land. That all this kidnapping, robbery, insecurity, they are tagging on IPOB is... Most of them are being done led by the Nigerian forces. I am telling you. Uh, in Kogi, they, they, they arrest the policeman leading armed robbery gang in Kogi. What about what is happening in Imo State? Every time we shout it. But they don't, uh, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, give a, 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 what do you, how do you say it? Give a dog a bad name in order to hang it. Anything that happens in our, if it's in our land, in Biafra land now, all those robbers, they say it's ESN. Oh, yes, and they will kill innocent people, carry, kidnap innocent, innocent Biafran youths, and showcase them to the zoo media that they are the, they are the criminals, they are the gang, they are armed robbers. That is what we are suffering in our land. But it happened in Kogi. And they arrested the policeman in charge of the gang. This is what is happening everywhere in our land. The insecurity happening in our land is mostly state-sponsored insecurity. It's state-sponsored criminality going on in our land. I, we on IPOB, we understand the capacity of a government, of a state. We know. That's why when I see people that are saying, oh, eh, eh, you know, uh, Biafra land to be peaceful, this and that, yes. But the authors of those insecurity is the Nigerian government. Is the Nigerian government complete? Nothing more. They are doing it in order to tag everything to IPOB to ESN. Don't you see now? They can Have you forgotten one time in Aba when they shot and killed some unknown government? Upon searching them, their corpses, they saw they were Nigerian military or Nigerian police. With Nigerian military ID card, they are Nigerian police. And they kept it quiet, but we saw it. Have you for, I think last year or last two years. Have you forgotten? So, this is what has been going on in our land. For you to understand what we are fighting. We are fighting a very sophisticated war. Nigerian government, they are instigating kidnapping in our land. In our forest, they are using full and headsmen. They are instigating kidnapping, using Nigerian military, using Nigerian police, in order to commit all these horrendous acts, so that our people will continue shouting, so that whenever the Nigerian government come and say, oh, it is ESN, people will say, ah, 
instead of us to continue suffering like this, let us, I beg, yes, we pursue ASN and IPOB. We don't want IPOB again. These are propaganda, a kind of war, uh, 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 you know, war propaganda. It's manipulation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a way to discourage our people. They will come and orchestrate insecurities in our land in order for the people to rise up against and their media, they will be using their media, pinning it, everything on IPOB, whereas they are the people sponsoring everything, carrying out everything so that the people will be tired because they know that our people love peace. Even if it is a piece of a slave, slavery, peace under slavery, they love it. And is it not the peace we have been staying since 1972 today? Are we really in peace? <laughs> you know, I used to say there is we don't want the, this dangerous peace. We don't want it. A peace that we be, you know, we 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 will be victims of the peace. No, we don't want it. To hell with it. We want to be free and free forever because every nation's fought for their freedom. Once you know, wherever you are hearing me from in Europe, in America, in Japan, they once in their lifetime or many times fought for what they are enjoying today many countries fought different wars they fought and continue fighting for them to be where they are today so once you are you know uh, scavenging for peace at all costs you will be the victim of that peace that is what happened to us in nigeria every time is peace in that peace 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 and we become the sacrificial lamb for the peace. Then what type of peace is that? The Nigerian government is sponsoring directly the insecurity, the kidnapping in our land, the armed robbery in our land, because it's a tool, it's a war tool, they are a propaganda material for them to be targeting it on ESN. That is, that is, that is it. Any slightest in the target, we know it's an intelligent job. But the issue is that do, do our people understand? Our people have many of our people have very you know uh, simple brain. They don't have sophisticated brains of thinking in a sophisticated manner. But IPOB we do. That is it. So this Kogi police uh, police inspector in Kogi, he has been uh, caught and arrested. He, le he is leading different gangs of armed robbery, kidnap everything. Imagine he's in our land. He will be the person, that armed robber, that uh, man that they caught now, will always be at the forefront and hunting. He will come like Abba Kiyari, the former police, uh, the fo police officer. Uh, he will be at the forefront. Uh, it's ESN, ESN. We are, we are asking. He's the person doing it, commandeering it, being used by the Nigerian government to do it. That is how they act. They will be at the forefront shouting, yeah, ESN, I will deal with them. Don't worry. But they are the people doing it. You have seen it now in Kogi. In Kogi, you have seen it. Okay. Now, the the last but not the least on, on the on the distant, on the news headline is, is this. Let me just bring it out. UAE government hikes visa visa application to six hundred and forty thousand naira. Wants Nigeria to show ten thousand dollar bank balance. UAE, UAE that came to borrow money from um, Obasanjo, nineteen seventies, and he mocked them that is a desert. Today, they are hiking this visa fee. Where have you seen it? Visa fee of a 640, maybe 400 to 500 dollars. Where did you see this thing? And wants Nigeria to show 10,000 dollars bank uh, balance because you're a Nigerian. That is it. Because you are a Nigerian, so you are exploitable. I think the governor, the president of um, Equatorial Guinea, openly challenged Spain that they are exploiting, scamming their people. 
they collect the visa fee, they don't give them visa. In Nigeria, who talks for you? <laughs> Do you see why Nigeria, why they want Nigeria to continue being? Because every you are exploitable. If which government, which person will talk for you? They will even uh, you know encourage them to continue. You pay your visa fee, they will not even give you visa. That one is gone, it's non refundable. It's written there, it's non refundable. Do you know how much they are making? Do you know how much European governments, uh, American governments are making on Nigeria only on visa fee? The, what of uh, what of uh, this TOEFL test of English as a foreign language? What of TOEFL, which they conduct every week? Do you know how much they make from it every every day? Visa fee only is uh, oil, crude oil, crude oil money. Do you know that? So the the other uh, people, the West is exploiting your misery, and you become more misery. You become more miserable. They want you. They, that is what. These are the reasons why they want to want Nigeria. No, you are going nowhere. You have to be oh, Nigeria. The proper wire there. You are Nigeria. The unity of Nigeria is non negotiable. The unity of Nigeria is the. Uh, the I mean, they are the the their destiny is their diversity. How do they say it? You understand? So, why? Because of this, they are exploiting you. Two hundred and something million people. Do you know what? Do you know what it means? Do you know what Nigerians consume in a day that comes from abroad? Do you know people? You countries to sell their market. You are a market center in Nigeria. This, look at Dubai, United Arab Emirates. You have a high to visa application because everybody wants to go. So, 640,000 naira for your visa application, visa fee. And it's not guaranteed that they will give you visa. It's not a refundable fee. Do you know that? Do you know that? You lose it, you go and sit down. Who will you complain to? Do, does Nigerian government care for you? Uh, because, why is it so? Because Nigeria is created for the people to be uh, dummies. Nigeria is created for exploitation. It's not a, like any other country. Are you hearing me? Nigeria is not like any other country. I saw a video clip of, I think, in Oba, where Ibuba got shot and killed somebody. Anywhere, everybody want to hand it. Just say somebody, how about I get You know, wow. Which kind of, which kind of situation is this? All the time, we are by, we can be suicidal in what we are doing. What type of life are you this? Every time we are willing. Willing, 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 willing. Do you know why Arabs are respected? Because they are ready to die for their cause. Whereas you love good life. So we're not dulling now. That's it. Until you rise up. Until you understand that you have to give away your life in order to get it. That is it. Nigerians are suffering. The misery of Nigerians is the benefit is to, the, you know, to the advantage of foreigners. And that is why I'm going to preach about it today. Look at a, listen to a Kenyan, a Kenyan cabinet officer that resigned honorably because of the, you know, the protest of the population. I want you to, I will play it before I go to the subject matter today. Have you ever seen a Nigerian politician resign honorably because of what is happening? No. Have you ever seen it? Because Nigeria is not like any other country. Even Tinubu, before he became a president, he, he expressed it privately to somebody, saying, now nah, leave this. Nigeria is not like any other country. So leave. I think you get what I'm saying. It's high time you join IPOB. In one way or the other, whether you're even a beer friend, we are fighting for your for your goodness as in as a people. We are fighting to save lives in Nigeria because Britain is using Nigeria to kill everybody, to sentence everybody into what we are. We are not what we are not. Britain used Nigeria to cage everybody, to try to recreate our uh, recreate us to, to 
other type of another type of homo is it to homo erectus or homo something i don't know not homo sapiens for them to be looting listen to this kenyan kenyan please good evening the people of kenya the constitution of kenya of 2010 article one sub article one says all sovereign power belongs to the people and shall only be exercised in accordance with the constitution all sovereign power belongs to the people that is one thing nigerians don't know do you know you know they tell you that constitution rules is the highest yes but in a in a in a republic the population the people is more than the constitution because they can rise up today and go and bring down a government a constitutionally elected government the the population can can bring it down because the sovereign power belongs to the people that is what nigerians don't know that is what they don't know so in a situation like in kenya kenya at least they have a is a people they have a a, a country but nigeria is not like kenya nigeria is not in, like any other country nigeria they force different nations to get under one point so that they maintain imbalance britain acted very smartly they maintain imbalance and that imbalance will continue to the to the adv to their own advantage i will expand it later please Today, I tender my resignation as a cabinet secretary in the government of Kenya. I want to offer my heartfelt apology to the people of Kenya for the greed, high-handedness, selfishness, arrogance, nepotism, tribalism, and all the bad things that we have done to you in the last two years. When we came to power, we called ourselves shareholders and decided that most Kenyans are not part of the government, are no longer part of the state and do not have any human rights. We went ahead and received bribes from all over the world and especially from Dubai. Do you see why? Do you see why I love this man? He's not excluding himself. Unlike Nigerians, they will, if he's a Nigerian, he will tell you that they they receive bribe, excluding himself as an angel. He said, "All this we did it because I'm part of the government. We are responsible." You know, the other day I said it that um, responsibility. I mean, maturity come comes with responsibility. These are mature, mentally mature people. No matter you call them all Africa, they are not the same. Nigeria is exceptional. It's not a country. It's not a place. I am telling you. Have you ever seen a Nigerian uh, uh, public servant resigning honorably? Because of what he He just come and announced that I'm resigning. Have you ever seen it in this life? The answer is no. Because these are hunter-gatherers. Nigerians are hunter. I'm not talking about politicians only. All Nigerians, because out of the out of the people you bring, you have politicians. Any person that is talking this and that, let him enter the system as a politician. He will change and become like them. Is it? We bought very expensive watches, some as expensive as one million. Kenya shillings equivalent in dollars. We bought bells worth 50,000 shillings and we made sure that citizens know how expensive we have become. In a country where poor families cannot pay their children's school fees, we were wallowing in luxury. I want to sincerely apologize 
And I want to say today that I am ready to give out all the bribes that I've received for the last two years. All the properties that I have now, which can be traced back to the bribes that I received, will be surrendered to the state tomorrow, early in the morning. Should I get a chance to serve the people of Kenya again, I will stop the greed, I will stop the arrogance. But most importantly, I will be accountable to the people of Kenya. To the police high command, the inspector general, who also tendered his resignation, I want to urge him to take Kenyans to all the graves where the bodies are hidden. It is time for accountability. Thank you, dear Kenyans. I say, uh, do you see, do you hear this man? He said he's ready tomorrow morning. He is going to return the proceeds of bribery he collected and the properties he bought with it the following morning. This is dignity. Maturity comes with responsibility. As a Kenyan government uh, cabinet is making resignation because of the protests of the people and the suffering of the people, listen to Ni the Nigerian politicians. Listen. Listen. This is we can the uh, former governor of Abia State and others, Baja Bia Mila and others. They are living large, flamboyant life. I put it, posted it on my timeline. You have seen the video, I know. But I just posted it. Uh, as their counterparts in Kenya are responsible, matured, trying to understand the feelings of the people, res resigning, telling, begging the population to forgive them, that they will make it up by surrendering all the bribe, all the properties, gotten, gotten wealth. Listen to the Nigerian politicians. Listen. Do you see Nigerian politicians? They are making mockery of the population. That is how the population are. They are living flamboyant lives. The people that should be burnt alive as they are. They, you know, you, they are living, living lives to the extreme. Mocking Nigerians. And you are not annoyed. Your problem is IPOB. 
Are you a human being? <laughs> are you a human being? The answer is no, you are not. Why their counterparts in Kenya are making no job for the people resigning honorably for the country to move forward. That is why, you know, no person takes Nigerians serious because Nigerians have become international, you know, mockery, 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 mockery. Let me go direct to the topic of my submission through beneficiaries of my of one Nigeria. Through beneficiaries of one Nigeria. Remember, it's under still under the series of living continuous colonial legacy. Because once we are living in Nigeria as Nigeria, you are living continuous colonial legacy personified. Nigeria is continuous colonial legacy personified. Today I'm talking about true beneficiaries of one Nigeria. You listen to your politicians, they are mocking you. They, you know, we are people are Joe Politicians are Nigerian politicians are live, increasing their salaries. They cannot pay, you know, minimum reasonable minimum wage. Thirty thousand naira. Thirty thousand naira that I'm I don't know. You use it to uh, eat a morning, afternoon, night, one day it finish. Is the minimum wage of somebody in Nigeria. We are as their politicians loot everything. The Nigerian senators, members of parliaments, they are the highest paid in the whole world. And Nigerians are keeping quiet. Look at uh, what they are, you know, they are talking about um, uh, protests. And we are telling our people, you don't, this is about Nigeria. You don't need, you don't need to go out to protest in anything about Nigeria because Nigeria can never be better. It's unfixable and it's a trap. You listen to the Hausa man, the Hausa cleric, quit the imam. They have bribed, they give money, you know, they now use it. Ibo, hey, you don't own your you don't go to own your They are starting, they have started tagging it to own your money. Ibo protest, Ibo organize protest. Do you see why Nigeria can never move forward? Do you see Niger why Nigeria has crashed? It's not like any other country, no. Kenyans, they came out as Kenyans. But Nigerians can never come out as Nigeria. No, 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 no. Because there is nobody that is a Nigerian. That is why I'm talking about the true beneficiaries of one Nigeria. In the history of nations, listen attentively, please. I want you to listen. Because I want you, I want us to learn something in this broadcast, please. In the history of nations and countries, the beneficiaries of those nations and countries are always the founders and all creators. These are the beneficiaries of the countries and nations. Now, I want to give you examples. I want to pinpoint you some examples before I come back to Nigeria. Now, let us go to how Germany was found. The origin of Germany. Germany, you are, you are, you are hearing my voice now from Germany. You are enjoying, you are enjoying, you know, working. Uh, high, you know, you work and you receive your salary weekly. You are, you are enjoying uh, 247 electricity in Germany. Listen. You are enjoying everything, you know, social welfare. Everything is organized. Listen. It depends on the founders of or the creators of the nation or country. The true beneficiaries of one Nigeria. That is what I'm talking about. I'll give example. I say, number one, Germany. After, listen, after the defeat of France in the Franco-Prussian War, the German princes, pro, uh, princess proclaimed the founding of German Empire in 1871. German Empire, 1871. Founded by a German princess. So it's a local. Are you hearing me? It's an indigenous person that found the country. So it must be to the beneficiary of the indigenous people of Germany. Uh, let me repeat it again. After the defeat of France in the franco prussian War, the German princess proclaimed the founding of the German Empire in 1871. It has dates. These are historical facts. 
Somebody from um, another oh, oh, thousands of kilometers didn't come to create a country. No. It was founded by the indigenous person, a princess in Germany. Now, Prus Prussia, Prussia, that is uh, when, we, when you hear Prussia, it's no more existing. It's a historical region comprised of parts of modern day nations of Germany, Poland, and Russia, as well as some other nearby nations was the dominant constitu constituent state of the new empire. The king of Prussia ruled as its Kaiser, and Berlin became its capital. Berlin is still the capital of Germany, isn't it? So it started, Germany was founded by the indigenous people, by Germans. So they, they, they are reaping the benefits. Um, they are the benefit. They are reaping the benefits of Germany because they have to develop it. It is their thing. Uh, you are uh, in a on the honor. I'm not quite him. Neko. It is their thing. Their thing. Just like a house you build in, in the village, you maintain it because you know how you suffer to build it. You always call home. Nake hene me nake yem video hene me dia ya chow kwam sobu dia disa because you know how you suffer to build this your house. That is how it is. Now that is Germany. That is why you see Germany is progressing. They have to fight and do everything in order to maintain the country because it was indiv indigenously founded. It was indigenously founded Germany. From different tribes of Prussia, of uh, this this god from there, they now the a German prince, a princess, a Prussian princess. That time, he founded a country. He declared the German Empire, and they maintain it till today. That is the continue reaping the benefits because it is their own. They know what it takes to, to create a, a, I mean, to find a country, to do their own thing. It is their thing in their own way. They have, they, you know, they can die defending the country because it is their own. Now, let me go to another country, Iceland. Iceland you are seeing. Maybe some people are listening to me from Iceland as I'm talking. Now, beginning on 28 May 1944, Icelanders voted in a four-day plebiscite, that is a referendum, what we Biafrans are asking, on whether to terminate the personal union with the mark, abolish the monarchy, and establish a republic. The vote was 97% to end the union and 95% in favor of the new republican constitution. Iceland formally became a republic on 17th June 1944. Today, it has a population of exactly 399,189 people. Iceland. Until the 20th century, Iceland relied largely on subsistence fishing and agriculture. Industrialization of the fisheries and the Marshall Plan Ed, Marshall Plan Ed, following Second World War, brought prosperity, and Iceland became one of the wealthiest and most developed nations in the world. Do you know why? Because the people, the indigenous people, took the decision of taking their destiny in their own hands by voting and saying, no, we have to get out of the mark in 1944, during the Second World War. So it is their own thing. They founded their own country. They, I, they say they don't care about their population. Maybe that time they were not up to 100,000. They say, no, we have to, we are going to move out of the mark and become our own country. And today they are enjoying it. That time they were poor. They don't care. Just like uh, United Arab Emirates. They didn't care. They say, no, we have to work hard. It is our own thing. We build it. They we are living on, mostly on fishery. After they started industrializing their fishery, it is a local effort. You understand? Because the country belongs to them. They are the people that founded it. Iceland is not a place that was being created by one uh, uh, Jagaban from New Zealand. No, from another place. No. Uh, I. Icelandish people, they did it by themselves. They said, no, this is what we wish. And exactly this is what we are trying to do 
IPOB is trying to do to establish our own nation so that we take care of it that thing they say we are we are not good in nigeria we can we don't understand how to run a country now you leave us we suffer is it not we that is going to suffer it they ask Mazin the and say look um uh, people, people said that you are going to be france if you have independence you are going to kill yourself Mazin the can answered wisely say it is better we kill ourselves than foreigners killing us you know maybe many people will not understand that it's better in your family you are fighting your brother you are fighting with your brother no problem but don't go outside let not the foreigners or uh, aliens strangers come to fight you it's better you fight because once you fight on the local law oh one day and one day you people we one time i say nah now, before we kill ourselves, if we kill ourselves, waiting now, strangers will come and take all the properties. Now, make we settle. Now, you self, why the fuck up? Now, you settle as a brothers. That is how it is. But once strangers, aliens come to kill you, they will kill all of you and take over what your great, great, great grandfathers have established. That is what we saw in Nigeria. And that's why we are doing what we are doing. Look at the oil in our land. Look at Ohaji, Ebema. Underdeveloped. We are as it is a place that billions of dollars are moving out every day through crude oil and gas. But they are underdeveloped. Why? Because it is for strangers. Strangers come and overpowered and continue removing everything from our land. Imagine that it is us, us, we ourselves in charge of our destiny. Even if on Haji, okay, even if uh, people from Anambra, they are doing it, it's still roaming around in our land. You see the same thing. Do you see the beneficiaries? Are you hearing it? Okay, today, Iceland became one of the wealthiest and the most developed nations in the world. A country that is not up to 400,000 in population, from the president to the last man. As I'm talking, many of our people, many Biafrans are there, hearing my voice. Little Iceland. Now, okay, I'm giving you examples of how countries, countries that the way they are found, because I told you that in the history of nations and countries, the beneficiaries of those nations and countries are always the founders and all the creators. So, the founders and the creators, how the country started matters a lot. Now, let me go to the United States, the USA. The Declaration of Independence proclaimed that the American colonies were separating from British rule and detailed the reasons. On July 4th, 1776, in Philadelphia, the Second Continental Congress declared the independence of the United Colonies as the United States of America. Led by General George Washington, it won the Revolutionary War in 1783. The Treaty of Paris, a, a Paris is, uh, established the borders of the new sovereign state. That is the founding of America, the creation of America by colonies. Colonies that are still there today. Are you hearing me? I will come, I will make more elaborate analysis. Colonies that are still there. That is why I used to say, had it been Britain is still there on land, like in South Africa, we are white people, are in our land, directly, it would have been better because they will be suffering what we are suffering. They will be seeing it. The worst thing that happened to us is for strangers to come and create, impose a country on us and move out. And now be using long hand, using their vassal, their stooges as politicians in order to control us. That is why yes, Mwika and all the other Nigerian politicians, but they are happy singing. Come, Lela, come, happy that oh, when they were in church, they carried the cross of Jesus. Do you see it? That is why they have the audacity to do that. Because they are not serving the population. They are serving the creator of the country. So you, are, you don't care. They don't care about you. They don't care. They have succeeded in alienating, making everybody become nothing. Now, after United, I'm giving you just examples before I land to Nigeria. Examples of countries, the way they were founded in a nutshell. Now, Japan. 
Japan was founded in 600 BC by Emperor Jimu, a direct descendant of Amatasaru, the sun goddess and ancestor of the present ruling dynasty. That is how Japan was founded, by their own, one of them. Are you hearing me? By one of them. No country, no stranger came and they instituted the, uh, from them a country and uh, run and leave them, say, you must stay here. You must be a country. Do you see why you don't have respect as a Nigerian? Do you see that? Now, let me go to United Kingdom. The Anglo-Saxon, that is England, fought and gained independence from the Roman rule in the early 5th century. That is precisely from AD 410 to 412 AD. This uh, England was colonized by, by Roman Roman Empire. But they became weak because of the attacks of other tribes in Europe, like the Visigoths, the Watisans, and all of them. Now, they became so weak that they can no longer take care of their colonies outside, like a far away England. And the England saw an opportunity and they struck to liberate themselves. They fought the war of liberation. This England that is torturing us today. The Kingdom of England, that is, you know that England is part of the United Kingdom. It emerged from the gradual unification of the early medieval Anglo-Saxon kingdoms known as the Heptarchy, East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria, Kent, Essex, Sussex, and Wessex. All these are some Anglo-Saxon kingdoms that make up United Kingdom or make up England. They emerged and formed England first. Remember, that those people removed themselves. They liberated themselves from the clutch of Roman Empire. So it is their thing. They did their thing. The, a process of establishing a country, their country. In 1707, the Kingdom of England, which included Wales, and the Kingdom of Scotland, united under the Treaty of Union to create the Kingdom of Great Britain. Do you see how United Kingdom came into being? The Acts of Union, 1800, incorporated the Kingdom of Ireland to create the Kingdom, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland in 1801. Remember, not Northern Ireland, but Ireland in general. Because the United Kingdom passport now bears the, uh, uh, the United Kingdom and the Northern Ireland. But in 1801, it was United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, not Northern Ireland. Now, growing desire for Irish self-governance led to the Irish War of Independence from 1919 to 1922. Almost immediately after the conclusion of the First World War, which resulted in British recognition of the Irish Free State. In 1922, six northeastern counties in Ireland opted out of joining the Irish Free State and remained part of the Union under this limited form of self-government. In light of these changes, the British state was renamed the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland on 12th April 1927 with the Royal and Parliamentary Titles Act. So, you see how they modified themselves by themselves. Not Ireland, some Ireland split into two. They fought for independence. I mean, Ireland. Their brothers, some six counties, not eastern counties, said no. Just like as we are doing in Biafra land, some people say no, we are not evil. We are not part of Biafra. Now, when they joined Nigeria, I'm just explaining to you the way you'll understand. And now, because Britain know how to split people. They know how to divide the brothers. So, Ireland, I mean, Ireland now move away. They became a country. Are you hearing me? In 1922, they became independent. After fighting for their independence for two years, from 1919, 
1922, they became a country. They declared independence from, from Britain, from United Kingdom. But some of their brothers said, no, we have to be with the Britain, you know, succeeded in manipulating them. And now they are they become they remain part of United Kingdom. That is why it is United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So Northern Ireland that should have been out with all Ireland by like their brothers, they refuse, they are still part of Britain. Do you see? So it is their country, they formed it by themselves. No country, no person came from the blues in order to come and create a country for them. That is why there is patriotism, they are building it. That is why there is development, both in Ireland though, and the United Kingdom. Are you hearing? Okay. Now, let's come to how Nigeria was formed. The name Nigeria was coined in the late 19th century by British journalists named Flora Shaw, who later married Baron, British, Baron Frederick Lugard, a British colonial administrator, Baron. You know, is the lowest form of order of nobility, baron. Before you have that uh, title, baron, is the lowest order of no nobility in the British uh, dynasty. You understand? So, is uh, baron Frederick Lugard? Nigeria was coined by his uh, Ashawa wife, a journalist. Le look at how she coined that name you have known this but we continue repeating it we continue reminding ourselves now in an essay that first appeared in the times newspaper on 8 january 1897 by miss shaw she suggested the name nigeria for the british protectorate on the niger river in her essay, Shaw made the case for a shorter term that would be used for the agglomeration of pagan and Mohammedan states to replace the official title Royal Niger Company Territories. Do you see? Do you see? <laughs> Are you, do you understand something? The colors uh, uh, Northern Southern uh, Protectorate, that is um, Mohammedan and uh, pagan. You know, they are the people that came to our land and started calling us pagan. Do you know the real meaning of pagan? It was started just like um, a name given to people that have different religion other than the world, the one recognized by Europe. Everything is their standard. They set a standard only for themselves. So if they, they don't recognize the type of religion we are in, our traditional religion, they call us pagans. The same way they call the Japanese pagans. Now, why they call Mohammedan? Because they know Islam. They know they knew Islam already. So Islam was recognized. So they as of that time. But they didn't know our way of worship. They didn't know that we have known God right from time. That is why they called us pagans. Because we are not going on the internationally acclaimed, recognized religion. And that name pagan paganism still stick in our heads, in our big heads, scores till today. We started calling ourselves pagans. Do you see how how bad the things are? Do you see how how and we continue? You will see a brother you call a pagan. What do you mean by pagan? These are words that come from the colonizers because they didn't understand our mode of worship. Now, Flora Shaw. In 1897, 8 January, he wrote in a, a, his article appeared in the Times newspaper on the 8th January, 1897. So, in her essay, Shaw made the case for a shorter term that will be used for the agglomeration of pagan and Mohammedan states to replace the official title Royal Niger Company Territories. Because that time, the name was too long. Royal Niger Company Territories. Now, she thought that the term Royal Niger Company Territories was too long to be used as a name of a real real estate property under the trading company of that part of Africa. Do you see that Nigeria is just a real estate of, of Britain till today? The, she she met, he said, no, this name, uh, how can you, be, you know, when you are trying to register a company, for example, you bring a suggestion, bring one. No, your wife said, no, 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 this name is too long. Let us cut it short. 
he bring a name Nigeria. It's a place of Nika, Nika area. So just so that it will save us this uh, Royal Niger Company. It's a warrior estate, yes. Uh, you know, every time we are writing on it, we say Royal Niger Company. No, it, it is too long. So she thought that the term Royal Niger Company territories was too long to be used as a name of a real estate property. So, for you to understand that Nigeria is a real estate property of Britain, that is why you cannot, there is nothing you can do. You have no power in order to ameliorate it. Stop deceiving yourself. You are blaming Tinubu, blame Buhario, blame this and that. Oh, the government. No. The, God, the problem is fundamental. The creators of Nigeria created it to be so. It is a their real estate. So there is nothing you can do to better it. It is impossible. The best thing is what we are doing. In order to do what? To balkanize it. Once we balkanize it, now Britain has no more choice because we destroy their real estate. Or have a we destroy them. If you think that you can, oh, let's pray for Nigeria. You can better Nigeria. You are living in cloud Kuka land because they put Nigeria, the creators of Nigeria, created this as their real estate property. You are there as a non-entity. You are nothing. You cannot do nothing. That is why all these politicians that are vassal, that are studious to Britain, they are there, you know, feeling relaxed. Living flamboyant lives. We are harassed. Millions of people are dying of hunger. And you can't do nothing. Because it is the British real estate. Do you now see our argument that Nigeria is unfixable? Oh, come out. Let us protest. You pro your protest goes nowhere. You are protesting to better Nigeria. Oh, for God, God, God. Look at Tiribu. Uh, he, he sent uh, 20 trucks of uh, 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 rice to East State so that uh, they give you uh, one cup of uh, gari, uh, one cup of rice for a family and you are happy. That is, the, that is their economic policy. Do you see that? Do you see re British real estate? That is why, despite that our land is produces where crude oil is being drilled, the gas, everything, but you are not benefiting from it because you are, your are land is real estate of Britain. This is what we are trying to destroy in order to make sure that we take the bull by the horn. The same way other countries founded their, their country, I mean, other people founded their own country. The same way German princes founded Germany. The same way the colonies of United States of America founded their country and fought war to wait off Britain and take the bull by the horn. That is the same way we are doing it. Otherwise, you continue suffering, you die, you come out again in Nigeria, you continue suffering. Generations upon generations continue suffering because the people, the person that created you or created the, the country, you are answering the name Nigerian. It, they created it not for your own advantage. It is not for your own benefit. It, rather, it is for their own benefit. They are the true beneficiaries of one Nigeria. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is why Britain don't want to use ear here, here. Oh, we want to uh, uh, remove Nigeria. We want to get out of Nigeria. They don't want to hear, hear it at all. They will rush in and say, no, this is our toy. This is our real estate. Who have you, have you gotten, you know, just let me give you an example. You bought a land. You bought 10 plus of land. And all of a sudden, you see somebody coming to take two plus out of it. Starting building. We are, wherever you are, you will rush and come and say, ah, ah, who is building this? It's my land. I bought it. This and that. That is how Britain is doing in Nigeria. That is why whenever they hear about Biafra, whenever they, they will come and in order to do what? To make sure, no, the diversity, your diversity is the strength. We, there must be one Nigeria. Because it is their plot of land. It is their real estate property. So why are you trying to be free? You cannot be free because you are not ordinary. You are not normal human beings. You are subhumans. And you are going with them. They are the true beneficiaries of one Nigeria. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it's for you to make a choice. Either to remain British real estate or to be independent. Fight for your freedom as others did. That is it. The choice is yours. We, dear friends, we have taken it as a duty. It's a duty that we must liberate ourselves from this British created real estate property.
that is called Nigeria. Don't you think it's an insult? Don't you see yourself as being insulted that you are you are land, the country you have, you know, using the passport, uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria, is a property of a foreign country. Do you see yourself like that? Don't you see yourself like that? Can't you think, as a, as a normal human being, you should reason, oh, this Nigeria, let us make it better. There, if you want, there is nothing you can do to make Nigeria better. If you want, invite Jesus Christ to come and be president of Nigeria. If nothing he can do because there are unseen hands, British unseen hands, that are clutching, holding the steering. You can't do nothing. Are you hearing me? You can't do nothing. The population of Nigeria are seen as ants, non-entities, noise makers. There is nothing you can do. The only thing you fight is for us to destroy that place. That is the only thing. That is the only solution. To balkanize that place and be our real selves. That is the best you can do as a human being. And that is what IPOB is doing. That is why we have taken the, the step of taking the bull by the horn. Are you hearing me? After initially adopting an indirect rule, after initially adopting an indirect rule approach in 1906, the British merged the small Lagos colony and the southern Nigerian protectorate into a new colony of southern Nigeria. And on January 1st, 1914, Lord Frederick Lugard, the governor of both the northern Nigeria protectorate and the colony and protectorate of southern Nigeria signed a document consolidating the two, thereby creating the colony and the protectorate of Nigeria uh, as, in, as Nigeria, creating the protectorate of Nigeria. That is how Nigeria came into being, created by one man. He was the governor of a Southern Protectorate, Northern Protectorate, the colony of Lagos. He joined everything together and bring a book, bring me a book, let me sign. These are Neanderthals. These are subhumans. He signed, I signed today. I join all of you. You, 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 you are all Nigerians. And they, say, oh, they don't know what happened. We are us all that other places. It is the local people that have to find out, that have to find the country, that have to create their country, that have to find their either their their, their kingdom, the nations they are. Do you see why you are not benefiting from Nigeria? It is right from the fundamentals. It is right from the grassroots, from the foundations. So it is not something, uh, if you want to bring 100 OB, bring uh, other brands, let them become president, there is nothing. Tomorrow you start shouting, nothing you can do. Nothing. There is, Nigeria is unfixable. The only beneficiaries of the Nigerian misery, because it is their real estate. Florashaw said it. What I read for you is history, history historical fact. Flora say, Flora Shaw said, no, let us call it Nigeria because this real estate, this is our real estate. It is our property. It, the name is too long. Royal Niger Company Territories. It's too long now. So, the name of our company, our real estate property, it should be Nigeria. He su she suggested in a fourth form. And the thing all go well for the, uh, is it the King of England or Queen of England as of that time, to the British monarch? monarch and they say, yes, it's okay. You are bright. This is our real estate. Have you, have you asked yourself, why is it that during presidential election, it is the British? It is them that come out and start telling you. They will come out and announce the result. They will come out and start tell, telling you that, no, you are democracy. You are the largest democracy. Start flattering you on a country that you don't have any, con any control about. You don't have no control on the country. It is their real estate. Every time they come out to tell you that, oh, your diversity is your strength, that the unity of Nigeria is what we depend on, we can never allow the territorial integrity of Nigeria to be thwarted. That is written for you because it is their property. It is not for you. So how can you take care of something that is not for you? Something that is above you? How? 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 Before Tinubu entered power, he signed everything for them. They, they brought him to... The, uh, why is it that... Look at... Uh, during the campaign time, presidential campaign, how many 
Nigerian journalists did the Britannia grant interview to interview him. None. Almost none. But every time he goes to Chatham House, he goes to England, he goes to London and talk to British press and talk to strangers because he's talking to them. You, you in Nigeria, you, you, you are nothing. Nigeria doesn't belong to you. So why, why should he waste his time talking to you? I think they even, they want, at one time, they organized a presidential debate between uh, presidents or presidential candidates. Tinibu snubbed everybody. He didn't attend. Have you forgotten? Because you know that you have no power to stop him. If Nigeria does not belong to you, you are not a beneficiary of Nigeria. He is going to the source, the people that owns the country. He is going there to talk to them, to negotiate with them in order to enter power and continue. Because he says he's done. So you as a Neanderthal in Nigeria, you are calling yourself a Nigerian. You are a Neanderthal. You are an orangutan. You are nothing. You, you don't have a control over Nigeria. The people that have control are their creators. Britain is the creator of Nigeria. Do you see the logic? <laughs> Do you see why you have no control over your life in Nigeria? You have no control over what is happening in Nigeria. Like any other country, no. You have no, you have no control. The only thing, the only thing, the only solution is to balkanize Nigeria. What IPOB is fighting for in order to liberate us, liberate the Ariwas, liberate the Ududuas, liberate Biafrans from the shackles of British conglomerate. From the shackles of British real estate property. Because as a Nigerian, as Nigeria, you are a British property. It is official. Are you hearing me? It is official. So, <laughs> they will continue uh, 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 comforting you, encouraging you. No, you will get it good. How many people used to die? Last time, last presidential election, they killed people. Even they use helicopter to bombard in order to carry election materials. Now, Britain sees all this. They laugh. They say, no, yes, it's the creation. <laughs> Human beings are not dying. They call you, they refer to you as orangotang. Even monkeys are better than you. So your life doesn't matter. In a British election, have you seen any death? If one person loses his life because of a presidential election in Britain, every the world will stand still. The whole Britain will stand still. They will annul that election. But when it comes to Nigeria, they are real estate property. They don't care about their lives. Thousands will be killed. They don't care. They will come and announce that, oh, hey, it's a democracy. This one I've ruled. Because what they want is just to just to uh, fill up that uh, the same people that, oh, you have done it, uh, leave all those uh, monkeys. They have done it. Let us pass them. Give them pass mark. It's their standard. We want to get out of this real estate property because we are not the beneficiaries of Nigeria. The, the beneficiaries of one Nigeria is Britain with their cohorts, with their cohorts, with their Western allies. Are you hearing me? Okay. Now, Nigeria is being used as a tool to conquer the indigenous people through assimilation. You know, they are, they are swallowing us. They are changing our nomenclature, our character, the way we reason, the way we think, the way we behave. That is assimilation, letter by letter. You know, I used to say this. Let me continue. Let me repeat it again. If Nigeria is not stopped, if Nigeria is not balkanized and it continues going on as a country, in the next 50 to 100 years, Nigerians will become another type. They will deviate from real homo sapiens and become another species of woman. Very bad species. I am telling you, because that is the creation of Britain. The, you know, because, you know, you are, you are the system you are. You are the system you are in. Are you hearing me? The, 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 the peculiarity in us, they want to destroy it and create, use it, turn it into monster. Do you see what I'm saying? Look at the Biafra, the coastal part of Biafra. They have turned it into the most uh, 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 polluted part of this global globe, globe, the most polluted part of this planet. It's in Biafra land. Because why? Nigeria is the real estate property of Britain. So they don't care how they deal with you. 
you the people they see there so they are not human beings they are subhumans that is what they want to recreate so that they will be seeing us they will be calling us they will be referring us that we are or we don't have the ability to rule ourselves just as uh, is it peter Buta of south africa said it that the black africans have don't have the ability to rule themselves and they continue working towards it to make us not to be able to have the capability of ruling ourselves today in our land they you know they are the the system they created in our land is trying to change our character are you hearing me it, Docility, number one, laziness, waiting for miracle, telling you that, no, if God didn't do it, no person can do it. It's God. So that is what they want. In order for them to aid them to be ripping, ripping all, exploiting their real estate property, which is Nigeria, deviating your mind so that you don't think. That is it. Nigeria is being used as a tool to conquer the indigenous peoples through assimilation. The same way as the Ottomans, who used a method of gradual non-military conquest involving assimilation in position of political leaders on the uh, people, acting on the people, acting as vassals. You know, Ottoman, Ottoman Empire, Turkey you are seeing today, they use the same system and impose on the Arabs. Are you hearing me? <laughs> they continued gradual assimilation of Arabs. No, you have your, uh, your king, so no problem. The same way, in our local villages, they give, oh, we have our chiefs. But who is in control of the chiefs? The governors. They give them certificate of return. Anyone that is not with the governor, with the Nigerian government, they remove him. That is how they work. They make you feel that, oh, you are in control of your destiny, but you are not. They are in charge of those that are in charge of you. They, they impose leadership on us. That is why there is nothing you can do in order to ameliorate, to better anything in Nigeria. No. You remove it from your head. Everything about Nigeria is deception. The people, overall people, at the highest, at the apex of the pyramid is the British. They are using all these people you are seeing as governors, as presidents, in order to manipulate you. Now, the presidents, the governors are using the local chiefs in order to rule us in the village. The people you respect, they impose them. They tell them, they give, they give them order on what to do in the village. That is why everywhere there is a problem. Because we are not in control of our, of our situations. There are people at the back that are giving them order on what to do. Do you see? But for you, you uh, you think that, oh, that is a uh, chief uh, Ononaka. is your chief, uh, is your town chief. But he's receiving order from another place. Do you see it? Do you see the danger we are in? We, we are fighting to restore a country, our own country that we should be in charge. The hope, uh, the population will now be in charge of our country to build it with our hearts. To steer the country according to the way we like it. Not like Nigeria. That's why you should never go out to, to protest. Because there is not protest or they kill you for nothing. They destroy your goods for nothing. They burn your goods, your shops for nothing. You die in Nigeria protest, you die for simply nothing. Look at the uh, NSAS protesters that we are murdered. Some are still in jail till today. The same Tinibu that... Uh, Kill them, Britain. Britain, you know, rewarded him by making him the president. Do you see how they do? Because Nigeria is their real estate. Imagine that, look, just tell yourself this to the truth. Imagine that Nigeria is, for example, is being controlled by Nigerians. Do you think that somebody like Tinubu will become even a candidate? Just tell me. After NSAS uh, protest, when uh, Katrina Liang met him, the following night, uh, we sent soldiers. He said, do it. We will back you. Remember, we will make you president if you want. President of uh, Nigeria in 2023. And he sent the military. He said, oh yeah, go ahead. Go and kill them. What did Britain say? Till today. Those that die, they die for nothing. They carry Nigerian flag, thinking that um, uh, the military, Nigerian military is working for them. That Nigerian flag will save them. They gun everybody down. 
because Nigeria is the real estate of Britain. It's their property. So, who are you? You don't have anything to do to change in Nigeria. You don't have anything to contribute until Britain says so. Because Britain is in charge. They are using these politicians. That's why the politicians, they are reaping millions and millions and millions in salary, in allocations to themselves. We are as a people, all the population that are suffering, that are, that are working hard to pay them are suffering. And they are singing music. They are enjoying themselves, living flamboyant life. What, what are you going to do? You do, when you come out to protest, they will send military to kill you. They will slaughter you. They will target Igbo as they have started. And they will destroy your good for nothing. You can't do nothing. What are you going to Because Nigeria doesn't belong to you. Let us fight for a country that should belong to us. That is Biafra. That is the only thing we have. And nothing more. Therefore, the beneficiaries of that real estate property known as Nigeria are her creator and the prison warders we call politicians managing the British real estate property for Britain. That is why Mwike and other they are happy, happily singing their music. If you, if you don't want to see them, go and buy because they are in charge. It, look, do any republic, any country you call the republic, you see the politicians, they are at ease, they are not on their toes. I am telling you, the people are suffering, the population are suffering. Real republic. Real country, republic country. That is for the real democracy or republic. The politicians, they don't joke. They, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, you see them, they are always stern and serious. They are always afraid of the people because they don't know what to do and the people will come after them. So they, they take their job very seriously. Watch British, what, take your time and watch British Parliament. They don't joke there. They don't go there and say, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the president, sir, is uh, no. no. They speak, you know, the way they speak the voice of their people they are representing. So that their people will not feel bad. Not what they are doing in Nigeria. Look at, let me play you, let me play you again for you for your reminder. Your politicians are with wine in a flamboyant house, you know, singing. What can you do? People are suffering. What can you do? Because you are not the author of Nigeria. Nigeria is just the British real estate. It's a property of British, a foreigner. It's not like any other country. Listen. They are singing. They are having good time. In the Republic. They are politicians. Those. Yeah, people are suffering. Yeah, the worst part of it, let me, let me pause. The worst part of it is that you see the miserable Nigerians, most of them will be praising these people, hailing them. People that should be burnt alive, they will be hailing them. That is how it is. Because Nigeria, Britain have used Nigeria in order to restructure your life in a way that, you know, it becomes bent, docile. It changed the Nigeria is changing the nomenclatures of the indigenous people. After all, they are using Fulani headsmen to pursue sa sack villagers in the north, replacing them, changing the names of their communities. And the people they are powerless. The highest thing they go and pray to Allah, pray to God to save them. Oh, they have reduced you as Nigerians into praying for oh, let us pray for a good leader. To come a good politician that will remember us because you are not in charge. We want to create, we want to go to our country that we should be in charge. Are you hearing me? That is who we are. That is so that is what we are what we are fighting for. In order to create, in order to resurrect our own country that we should be in charge. That the population should be number one, not the real estate you call Nigeria for Britain. Is a real a British real estate? Is their property? Are you hearing me? That is why the terminal where oil is being loaded in in Nigeria, no meter. 
Oh, share the text, uh, the whole British uh, petroleum, all of them, they take and load, they can load five million barrels a day. They, now they declare, they are declaring 1.2 million. Sometimes 1.1 something million. They take it. That is because it's their real estate. Is the, they are taking the process of their creation. We want all we want is to destroy the British that British creation. Put in sobu because every country you see different co countries that emerge today you are enjoying. They fought different wars in order to maintain that country because it is their own creation. If you say you cannot fight war, be ready to remain slaves, to remain as slaves forever. We Biafrans, we have refused to remain slaves. That is why we are fighting for what belongs to us. Listen to your politicians. They are singing. Whereas you are suffering. You, you are suffering. They are singing. They allocate everything to themselves. Because they are working for Britain. They are not working for you. Who are you? Who is the population of Nigeria? Is it them that put them there? It's Britain that put them as prison warders of the British real estates. The, the property of Britain. So they are just in charge as managers. They don't fear you. They don't care about that. That's why they can use you. If you think, if you, uh, highest, they use money by you. If you cannot be bought with money, they kill you. You are nothing. Listen. <laughs> Nigeria is the poverty capital of the whole world. Can you be provoked into righteous indignation? The answer is no, because you are no more responsive to stimuli. As a Nigerian, you are regarded as nothing because Britain created Nigeria as real estate, Royal Niger Company territory, the real estate property of Great Britain. It is official, it is a historical fact. That is why Britain detects what happened, not you. Not you. So, the real beneficiaries of one Nigeria are the British, British government, and nothing more. You are nowhere to be found. You have to join hands with IPOB, whether you do the world, you fight to remove yourself from this, this British real estate property called Nigeria. Very well, it is not going to do you any good to continue being in Nigeria. Are you hearing me? That is what Biafra is trying to do. What IPOB is engaged in doing to thwart British plan. They, call, they are referring to us as a subhuman, lower human being, by creating a country for us. And they are not inside. You know why South Africa is different? Because they have a settler, colony settlers that are still there. Anything that happened there, you still have white people that are suffering the same thing that blacks are suffering. They are there in South Africa. They are physically there. So, their own is different. But our own why is worse is that they are manipulating us from more than six, 7,000 kilometers or 6,000 kilometers from Nigeria in Britain. They are using all these useless vandals, 
prison warders, we call politicians. That's why they are living large. They don't care about we are feeling as a Nigerian. They don't care about the people that don't eat one, you know, three square meal. That is not their problem. They must maintain their flamboyant lifestyle. And you can't do nothing. You come up, to, they use military and shoot you. To, you remove life out of you. And you are gone. So, the overall real beneficiaries of one Nigeria, they are the creators of that Nigeria, fake Nigeria, the British, with their cronies, the politicians you are hearing their voice. I will go into a few minutes break so that when I come back, I will open the lines. Please do not go away. I'll be right back. <laughs> Well done. Obodo Ninja don't carry sensors, bust out though. Or you bring your ear closed, make me yarn. Anywhere you be, if not be Afra, you be. Whenever they won't count sensors for Nigeria, Kukuma come back to Biafra land though. Make them count you in your own land. Because during election, they killed us in the north and Yoruba land. And now them still talk say we not get right to vote in their land. So time don't come, make we boast our population. And if you no fit return, sell and get for your house. Make you no participate because them go add on a number for the region where we day. Another one be say, if you dare not and your tribe no be full and when you won't fill the form, identify your tribe. No go right full and it is very important. In this census, if Biafrans go come back like tomorrow, no day, them go no say we plenty for this Obodo Niger way we they so. We go use this census exercise to ascertain our population and the size of amenities where we need in Biafran territory. Remember, oh, every obstacle where we get for this freedom, IPO be done, they dismantle and small, small. And this population census go be another evidence to that effect. All hail Biafra, Biafra will hail you. Welcome back. This is Radio Biafra House of Service coming to you via Radio Biafra London. My name is Mens Mars, Jonathan Chinedu from Alo Province of Biafra London. We are here live and direct. Today is the 17th day of July 2024. Tata Bobo Joke, aka Therefore. Our lines are open. Remember, I talked about on the same series of Living Continuous Colonial Legacy under subtitle of the true beneficiaries of One Nigeria, which you have already known through my submission, the creators of Nigeria, because the beneficiary, the true beneficiaries of every country are the founders and or creators. In the case of Nigeria, it is the creator, the foreign creator of Nigeria, which is Britain. That is it. So you have no share there. That is why things are very hard. That is why you have no control. That is why you have no control over what is happening there. That is why you talk or you do anything, nothing. The politicians don't serve you. Rather, they serve their masters. The creator of Nigeria. That is Britain. Our lines are now opened. Our direct line is plus one. Two, one, three. Three, two, eight. Six, two, two, four. I repeat. Plus one. 213-328-6224. Our WhatsApp and signal line is plus 61405-142547. I repeat, plus 61405-142547. Give us a call and give Call us and give us your view about the issue at hand. I have my signal ringing, but is it signal or what's up? But it's not coming out. I don't know why. I don't know why. You can continue calling, please. Maybe calls are jamming. But you can call. You can call us. Because we must continue talking. Let me tell you. Uh, you know, human being is the only sapient, the only being that can that is able to convert its language into technology. Our language, spoken language, is could be converted into technology. Are you hearing me? Why why is my signal doing this? 
let me call her on signal Marzi, can you hear me yes i can hear you Marzi. i can hear you loud and clear there were, Marzi, go on please go on uh, you know yeah good evening from me Marzi, jonathan may as a continue to bless you for the good work we are doing for beer from people um just uh, as i used to say um history will remember you for standing tall to make sure that you preach this gospel without adding it any sweet talk you preach it the way it is and you know, when Mazin Nandekan was educating us many many people thought he's rude or he's um arrogant but at the end of the day it doesn't matter if he's rude or arrogant he's telling the, telling you the truth in your front when you go to bed and sleep you can't sleep well until you your heart will tell you but what this man is, is saying is true it doesn't matter how you see it he's spilling the truth in your front this is exactly what we are doing here including you on this radio biafra and uh, the the enemy have known that uh, we are not backing down for the restoration of biafra my jonathan uh, thank you so much and please allow me to make this important announcement if possible, please. Can I go on? Go on. Okay. Thank you, Mazi. Um, fellow Beer friends, lovers of freedom. My name is Mazi Akas. I'm calling from Austria. And uh, I serve the indigenous people of Biafra as IPOB Austria National PRO. Um, this announcement uh, we are trying to unveil is we are calling beer friends all over the world including the beer friends here in austria if you happen to find yourself on this particular date please join us in this important event and this event is esn fundraising ipob austria 2024 esn fundraising ipob austria 2024 we are calling all beer friends to join us on this particular day which is the third day of august 2024 join us so that we can be able to raise funds to support esn these men and women that have laid their life down for us to live to make sure that our bush our bushes will not allow fulani to occupy them to make sure that our people can go back to farm, that our people, you know, cultivate this year is because of the ESN, the work they have done to push out this Marodian far back where they are coming from, so that our people can, people can go back to farm. This is why we we'll keep on supporting ESN, created by IPOB, led by Mazen Nam Dekano. We must continue to support them. Please, we beg every IPOB Austria. All zona coordinators, all friends of lovers of freedom, support ESN on this particular day, 3rd of August 2024, and the time is 4 p.m. Austrian time, 4 p.m. This um I think is the same time we're having in here in summer with the um Nigerian time is also 4 p.m. Nigerian time. And uh, please, if you have a pen. I want to call the uh, Zoom meeting ID. If you have a pen, you can write it down. The Zoom meeting ID is 814-50-23-2209. I repeat, the Zoom meeting ID is 841 Two two zero nine, and the password is ESN. Password ESN. The guest of honor on this particular day, we are holding this ESN fundraising, which is on third of August, is Mazi Austin Abanim, IPOB European Rep, is going to be the guest of honor, and also the host of this particular day is IPOB Austria National Coordinator. Mazi Namde Owumere. The moderator of this day, Mazi Metuselangwa Wanne Metusedek. And the assistant moderator is Mazi Nweke. Please join us on this particular day. And we have a telephone number if you want to contact us. 
The telephone number is plus four three six seven six nine six seven zero seven four five. I repeat, plus four three six seven six nine six seven zero seven four five. Join us as we continue to do the needful, continue to you know, um, support ESN so that our land will be safe from these mar Marodians that came from Sahel. They want to take our land, we won't allow them to do so. So, Mas Jonathan, thank you so much. My beloved brother, give me the opportunity to make this announcement. Just all that you said this evening, um, we've heard what you said. We must continue to, you know, be at the background of this Radio Biafra, you know, help to also to educate our people what we must do to make sure that this struggle that we are in at last, Biafra must come. This is our destination. You used to say that nobody should praise you, nobody should thank you. All we are fighting is to make sure that the destination of what we are fighting for is Biafra. And we are also letting the world to know that the zoo government is still holding our leader in captivity because of his fighting for his people. He's being discharged and acquitted. They are still holding an innocent man. All we are telling them, release Mazin Nandekano, give us a day for referendum so that Biafran people will decide their fate. If we want to continue in that zoological, uh, zoological country called Nigeria, or we want to be on our own. Very simple and short. We are fighting nobody. Our hands are clean. It doesn't matter the, the criminality that Nigerian government is trying to create in our land. Chukwokika Biama will fight them. They have tried it before. We survive it. It's not in this 20, you know, 21st century that all Biafrans now we can look into something and know exactly what that thing is supposed to be. So, Master Jonathan, I, I really um, continue to ask you, my brother, do keep on doing what we are doing. Biafrans are proud of you. And uh, we hope one day all of us who celebrate in Biafra land for what you have done for us by giving us Biafra. Thank you, you have heard it, dear friends, about the, about the ESN fundraising, Australia branch. So be part of it. Caller on WhatsApp. Can you hear me? Welcome to the program. Caller yes, on WhatsApp. Okay. Good evening, sir. Okay. My name is Rosa. I'm calling from Iwacha. Am I... Mazi, uh, can, you jack, own... uh, what, uh, can you jack the radio or your application? Uh, oh, oh, my app can you lay it? There we go. Everyone had a bank pass so that I let you be up there. I know, because I know, we know. We know. Uh, 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 because on this side, yeah, I myself can need this lady where we because you have a cost of the job, many of them, man. Yeah. I don't know. If not, let you have a one side there because these people they need to pick up more and more. And I want Okay. Mbubiko, Emma, I only enter the Kuma Pasara, our leader. Emma, on this zoo government, the way Hanshi, all these things. And we're in now because I discharge like that. Because one day So that you have any other strategy you use with them, we they apply that kind of motion. Because the flat, why they are too They are on a on like this. At least that day or the next day, before you know it's now, then we do one or two things to get their own person out. So that they can wait in with our mindset. They can wait in the uh, our leader. We go now on the Ibaho, now at Tahoe, all the others on her. Because that man opens the gate before, before now. But in the end, they go, ah, I can name it behind him. And I had to be ready even to, to let him go. If there's any other way they use it, they, are, they use it. Yeah. Because 
you're that young man. Eh? I'm, I'm a me home bedroom, even for my own life. I'm a to gym bedroom, not in Kika, no matter who might be. I bought to be following all their, all these their treats, and they use them on the other. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm a rat, I'm a rat, I'm a rat. でお、ディソフレ、オパフンディバンナタナオブダリティンディトゥモッチ。イヴンモディポリスオフィティンウディウェアンチエメピポウティンビデイティ。イオンウェイハブフォイノイタアムドジェ。ンバトン。ウォナ
is very shameful to Africa, more especially Nigeria. Nigeria is the reason why Africa continent is remained the way we are today. Nigeria government did not even think about their, the future of their own of born generation, even the, the generation we are now. Mas, do you know how many of our people that die in the military? Say? Right now, here in Italy, no, do you know how many people, whenever they try to cross here, instead of to rescue them, many of them, they are, they are, they are killing them in the, in the, race, in the, in the, in the military. Race. But the African government did not see anything. The reason is that Nigeria, other countries are looking at Nigeria to, to, to change, to make things to better for the, for, the, for the whole entire Africa. But instead of that, Nigeria leaders are doing the bidding of this, uh, this uh, British people that you see. Imagine, have you ever seen can, in, can an African go to Britain, tell them what to do, or to create, to change a name of a village to their own name, or to, to, to a slave, to slave the, imagine, there's something that, you know, sometimes, sometimes years ago, I see that we, we Africans, we don't, we don't even think, even where we are here, Mazi, as sometimes I used to complain that yeah, they are doing racist or whatever. Mas, I don't complain anymore because I see myself as nothing. We are not contributing anything in the world. All black race. All we do is to consume. Look at Wiki singing on Nema Kamo just to, to make our people so called Christian, Christianity to see that, yeah, he's a Christian. Anytime they speak, they say, yes, Wiki has speaking. Or whatever, Mas, I don't think that I want to say, please, I don't, I don't want to take your time. Mas, Ian Chori Kubo. Because if anything happens for Nigeria, not, all, not only we will suffer it, because everywhere is hunger now. I think it's, it's an opportunity for us to find a way to show Nigeria that, that muzzle they are raising <laughs> now. We we'll use it to, to attack them back. Because because I continue, I know I'm not now. Even on my I'm on my side, I got no one again. When we are getting on a bag, in the sand, the cannon on a bag, it will go to religion where we block what I bring. Who wants to get in the city? Yeah, let's see the book. I can't run work. I'm not going to be any way. Any woman now, my money may this one. I have made this. I continue like this. All our, all our bones, all our bone generation, all now of our broken. I've been a son, one daughter. Mazu came by and make it an Israel. I am why I am good. I'm with pretty. Then I go about one day, I go about being a sub. I continue like this. Obunu, I am me and a Monday one is now an eighty present. I am Monday governor one who caught Koku Jobana because we open up with family. Only a man, only a man, only a man, I broke a good 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 we must continue. We must continue. Caller on direct line. Can you hear me? Welcome to the program. Yes, Mazi. Good evening, sir. There, what Mazi? Yeah, oh, Mazi, I met you from uh, um, Canada. Mazi, Udo Dirigi. The Kuragi. Uh, thank you for answering my call. In the Honorable, um, I, I cannot, I cannot um, miss without uh, adding my voice to your program. Um, you don't want to do this. na am a young woman. I'm a young woman. I'm a young woman. I'm a young woman. Because faith comes from here. Mazi, um, like you said in one of your previous programs, Nigeria is built on a tripod. And the tripod never had a stand. It can never balance. Okay, Romazi, Nigeria can never revolt. Nigeria can never revolt. Because they were the two biggest factors that is controlling everybody, religion and tribe. If, if they don't shoot religion to scatter the people, they will use tribe to scatter the people, just like they did in um, Entrance. But... But the only thing, the only thing that can save Nigeria is a radical revolution. Remember, I said two things. Nigeria cannot revolt because her running on tripod. But if the people can resist this tribe and religion and come together, we will bring down our government. I listen carefully to this, um, this clip you played about the Kenyan 
um, politician. I've, I've heard it before on Facebook. You see, I remember those days I was in Nigeria in banking sector. In in the Intercontinental Bank, my friend who was who was going through training there came out and told me that their MD listed their training complex. And he said something that never left his brain. That the word integrity starts from the word starts by the word I. Integrity starts by the word I. You see that Kenyan politician, despite the fact that the man, the man was a corrupt politician, home with integrity, he has realized that the power lies in the hands of Kenya. And he has came out, apologized, and willing to tender all the corrupt, um, all the things he can say from corruption. Marzi, if you have listened to that man very well, I think one of that is one of the people that bribed them in the UAE. One of the countries that bribed them with UAE. And the same UAE, based on your, this, your evening program, just, you know, you know, started accepting Nigerian passport again and increased the passport, the visa application. Is that not corruption? But nobody is speaking for Nigeria. Marzi, you touched on so many things. The, the only thing you can do this particular thing will go. The only way to save Nigeria is revolution. But now, coming to this upcoming, um, um, they, they call it uh, protest. How can you fix a protest and give a day? Is that not stupid enough? How can some gullible Nigerians, they are planning for protest and they are putting a date on it? That is you're telling your enemy that you're coming and they wait for you. That is why every other reasonable evil man should never participate. If it is a revolution, unexpected revolution, only will we participate and bring down Nigeria. But all the our protests to get, get Nigeria right with this, we are not part of it. Now, finally, Manzi, in my own definition of the beneficiaries of one Nigeria, and with so many beneficiaries. England is benefiting from Nigeria because they held Nigeria down through colonialism and religion. How with the Anglican Church. Rome is benefiting from Nigeria through Catholicism. They, they wash our people every morning contributed in Igbo land. Igbo land, 90% Catholic, and the money goes to Rome every week. Americans are also benefiting because America is a section of Europe. Arabs are also benefiting through Islam. So, man, I've been looking at all those things. EHG Nigeria had it too much. EHG Nigeria carried a carry. So, like I said, the only thing that will save us is massive revolution. Man, I don't want to take your time. I want to leave it here. me. Continue your good work because you are waking some people up. That yeah. one. There was. There was Marzi. Good day, Drake. Caller on um, signal. Marzi, if I need can you hear me? Be the last caller. Yes, my brother. Good day, Drake. Good day, Drake. Good day, Good evening to you and good evening to your friends and lovers of freedom. Uh, my name is Ifan Chukumwen Daibuchi and I'm reaching you from the Netherlands. Um, my brother, the, um, you know, the issue of uh, colonialism, the continuous colonialism, I would call it uh, neocolonialism, and who benefits from Nigeria and all. Sorry, I'm sorry, Marzi. Let me, let me bring you back. I touched with, I got with health. Knowing involuntarily, I'm sorry. I touch you the phone and it went on. Marzi, sorry, I it's my fault. I caught you up without even knowing involuntarily. Go on, Marzi. No, no worries, no worries. Thank you very much. Um, the um, contrition of that uh, or repentance 
of that Kenyan uh, Minister of State, uh, whatever is his office in the in the in, the, in this uh, uh, root uh, government. And uh, what I want our people, our uh, all Biafrans, all of us of freedom to remember is that this present root of uh, William Ruto of Kenya was the vice president of Uhuru Kenyatta when our leader was kidnapped in 2021 in Kenya. So he's not he's not he's not he's not a democrat per se. But what I'm trying to say is that the contrition and repentance of this is a minister or, of, or officer shows you that some people they know that what is going on is bad in Africa and the social when we come to Nigeria. People listen to this. Compare this contrition of this man in Kenya to uh, you know what is happening in Nigeria, a situation where. Politicians or politicians are living in untold openness. They bought this government, this present government, forget the brigandage and the thievery of the eight years before, before uh, you know, this government bought 150 billion naira presidential jet. It is already bought. If you if you look where, where you see it, they have put Nigerian logo there. You say Airbus, they are you know publishing it and trying to make it to look like Nigerian. 150 billion naira. While we have or they have Nigeria has, uh, has or is it six uh, aeroplanes in the presidential fleet? Some of them as young as 13 years old, and their 13 years old aircraft is new. Because if you give it a annual or periodical or service as required, it is good to go. But they went on and bought 150 billion uh, uh, naira uh, presidential jet, and they are doing uh, what they call it. they bought five billion naira presidential yacht. That is ship yacht for the for the president. Yeah, that is. Uh, for five billion, and they are building new, brand new vice presidential uh, or vice president's house for 21 billion naira. It is cheap, yet for the for the president. Yeah, that is uh, for five billion, and they are building new, brand new vice presidential uh, or vice president's house for 21 billion naira. by constitution who we say that this program and that program cannot go but he has bribed them forget and these people apart, apart from bribing them they have companies who tender for you know uh, construction and uh, uh, tender for all contracts they are stealing from there are you getting it and and, and uh, again <clears throat> excuse me they are doing this always in these austere times they are already notorious for being the best paid uh, you know, legislature or legis legislators in the whole world. But they cannot pay our suffering, our long suffering people, they cannot pay them 100,000 naira minimum wage. Minimum wage! You ask yourself, what is the, in the exchange rate to dollar, to euro, and to pounds? And you cannot pay somebody 100,000. How do you want somebody to survive in that uh, in that? In that place, as a workout, don't uh, and then ask yourself how many people are even employed, and those who are employed and earning thirty thousand naira in this time, how can they survive? That is a very good question. That will show you how they place their people. This these politicians, you see how they place the people. Eh? It is now obvious that they are intentionally starving Nigerians. In order to introduce their errant uh, uh, GMO crops, because when you have starved the people and make them hopeless and, uh, and, 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 and 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 you know useless, they will eat anything you give them. If they still let me die, uh, eat and die tomorrow, so they don't care. That's why they are making people so hopeless that food. Do. When we are growing up, my brother. We talk about a three square meal, then you know that you are, you know, you are alive. Now, people, if we see one good meal in a day uh, for some people, 
it is like thy heaven. Uh, it is now, uh, like we are saying, they are starving Nigerians intentionally, but what we are saying is that we have we cannot be fighting for Nigeria. You know, people are saying if it's revolution, if it's demonstration, we are not participating in any of them as Biafrans, as Yubo person, as a Biafran, or you know, our uh, regions, our territory of Biafra, all the East. We are not participating. We want referendum, peaceful and democratic, and we get little out of that place. They don't want, they've shown it by, by commission and omission since 1970. We, if, I can even say since 1966, or even going far back, but let's just start from 1966 to 1970. Okay, we we'll have ended the uh, construction, uh, reconciliation, and the uh, re rehabilitation. Oh, fine and well. From 1970 to today, where are we? So we are not we're not uh, uh, doing anything to favor anything that will make it uh, for better Nigeria for those who are living that delusion. So what we are saying here is that Britain must let Biafra go because that is the that is that is the hypocrisy of the higher sort. Britain, I still wonder why they left the democratic, peaceful, progressive. And welfare in European Union. The British left it left it by the so-called Brexit referendum. So why are they begrudging Biafra's Biafra exit or Biafra exit referendum to leave Nigeria in a democratic and peaceful way? But Anakwane Etudo Anakafegan Etanazo. So what I'm saying in conclusion is my people, dear friends, let's support our leadership that is championing the cause of our, our uh, liberation since our leader has been kidnapped and extorted rendition, even when he was there. Because what people tend to forget is that our leader, Mazin Nand Kano, is a member of the Directorate of State. So, and when he, before, like he knew, he, this day will come, he said, what DOS says goes to everybody. So just, let's not you know, mix things up. Let's support them and let's support the Eastern Security Network. Because that's why we are still standing. Because these people, they know that our bushes is, is no good area for them. I don't know what our governor, some of them are doing. And, and I hope that the spirit of uh, Igbo, uh, Igbo land, the spirit of Biafra, the spirit of our land will get into all of them to say, whatever you are doing for your Ministry of Livestock, we don't have land there. We are a dot nation as Biafrans. Only Niger State is almost bigger than all the Biafran territories. So what are we talking about? Let them do their livestock in the north. If we want, we come and buy. Support Eastern Security Network. Join IPOB. Let's restore Biafra. God bless Biafra. Thank you, my brother, for taking my call because I called late, but thank you. There Good night. Were. There were, Marzi. Thank you very much. And this is where I'm going to switch up the phones. There were. We must continue. You know, let me tell you, just like our brother said, um, countries giving bribe to, to get what they want from others. Yes, bribery is corruption, but it's a tool. It's just like giving ammunition, America giving weapons for to other other countries to kill themselves. <laughs> but in in their own country, they control the ammunition. <laughs> you understand? So let me you know, say this, you know, in my epilogue. In world politics, it's about interest. There is nothing like conscience. Nothing is good or bad. The only thing that is uh, good or bad is if you can get away with the consequences. That is it. You, that's why, uh, 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 you know, countries kill. They kill in the name of countries. They remove human lives. Are you hearing me? In the 80s, when... Um, America wanted to start a Star War, this Star War of building um, technology that uh, in the satellite, I mean in space, that can be that can be able to remove, be shooting down 
missiles like mostly nuclear weapons building it, it will be permanent in the in the space waiting for any weird because once missiles uh, are fired they fly up so they this in the the the, the that system will be used in shooting down detecting any part of the world soviet union saw it as a menace because they want to reduce soviet union into ordinary ordinary world power not superpower any longer because there are two superpowers america and uh, russia now former soviet union russia the two superpowers but america wanted to monopolize and become the only superpower in that weaponry and russia said no they never have this kind of um a technology they tried they never acquired it if they if america have it they are finished they will be reduced as ordinary they have nuclear weapon like others but um they can't do much with it so they can they can weigh have for any weight at all as a superpower they will be reduced as only world power so what did they do they started eliminating the scientists that are involved in that program in different parts of the western world in london in united kingdom in everywhere different parts of europe <laughs> are you hearing me and that is why that is how that program was um, dissolved <laughs> are you hearing me so there is nothing like good or bad or conscience you know all these ones is for uh, conscience is for to call for population i am telling you as long as you can what discourages or makes you see something as bad like that is the consequences can you be able to face the repercussion if you can face it now you do it what makes you fear is the repercussion not about the conscience is good or bad no it's after when, once you look at the conscience I, I mean the consequences you try now to say as if it's a conscience that is no is a repercussion if you confess the repercussion you do you do it so what am i trying to say in this world you have to fight there is nothing like uh, oh, begging it doesn't I, this is where i always want to hinge because this is where our people are getting it wrong they thought that with begging with uh, you know you can get no you fight look at the, the sokoto caliphate from 1804 that ottoman danfudio started that jihadism in the northern part of nigeria till today they never deviated they maintained that that program that policy that jihad ask yourself if it is if it is us for example we would have stopped and say okay uh, now it's okay uh, no we are no more that one uh, they are our ancestors after all they are evil self they kill they have gone so now it's our own side to chat our own part you know do you see the mistakes fatal mistakes the our our pattern of thinking that is flawed no focus it's only IPOB that has come and brought up a focus to us before we have no focus. As Igbo people, we don't have no, we didn't have any type of focus. That's why everybody is in Nigeria. You are defending Nigeria. You are ready to kill your brother for Nigeria. And the Northerners, they are laughing at you. They are not laughing at you. Do you see how bad it is? We use our whole hearts in nigeria thinking that is our country without knowing that it is a british creation it is a real estate property of britain it is written it is written by it is it is on record it's a real estate of britain real estate real niger company so what what do you think you can change they put it on a tripod and it they continue maintaining an imbalance perpetual imbalance so that you continue fighting to get the balance before you can put a pot on it so you see that anything about nigeria is a is nonsense 
Britain created Nigeria on a tripod, which is so flawed. Now they of the of Seta Kojia one of the tripod oh, Kojia, Wajia. Now you you take all your whole life, try to balance maintain the tripod with a, a fundamentally flawed one 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 of them one of the pillars. When are you going to talk about uh, lighting, putting pot on it and lighting? It's impossible. You cannot progress. It's a, it's, a, it's a British way. That, that is their thing. That is their way. So the only thing is to destroy that they have created. Now you create your own. So that Britain will no more have any handle, no vassal. If we declare Biafra, Britain will no more have access. It will no more have access as it used to have in Nigeria. It will no more have access. Because it's no more their thing. That their real estate will be destroyed, and everybody will go and answer their father's name. So Britain will be left alone. You understand? That is why they are trying to patch Nigeria. Anyhow, they tell you, say, don't worry. In Nigeria, we cannot allow anything to do Nigeria. Nigeria is our creation. We will not allow anything. Your diversity is your strength. The unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. They invented all this coined all these uh, mantras in order to continue deceiving. So there is nothing that can fix Nigeria. Our brother said, if we can go around, if everybody can come on popular revolution, it's impossible. Completely impossible. Popular revolution is when you see yourself as a Nigerian. When you, when you are bala, you are patriotic. When you, but uh, there is nothing like that in Nigeria. There's nothing like that. You don't see the politicians, they have started using, oh, Igbo, just as they say, Igbo coup. Oh, Igbo, pro, Igbo arranged the protest. So, scatter, scatter, everything is scattered. There is nothing. No, there will never be a popular revolution. It's impossible. And SARS protest show you. It tells you all you need to know. Every other thing is nonsense. Rubbish. Yeah, and with this unbalanced tripod that is why the politicians are thriving 0.001 percent of the politician of the population that are politicians they are happy tribal i mean thriving very lively singing music enjoying their lives living their life flamboyant lives because they are in charge they don't serve you they don't serve the population they only listen to the creator that is britain so these are the real beneficiaries of one Nigeria. We must remain consistently consistent. I used to say, there is no, you know, the South Sudan fought war for 39 years. Do you know what is 39 years? Some British members of parliament today are 24 years. Some are 26. Some are 28. They are not. Some are, they are not up to 30. But uh, that is, since they burned them till now, South Sudan was fighting. Imagine that. Can you do that? Eritrea fought for how many? I think 17 years. War, continuous war for 17 years. Can you do that? We are only agitating. Not war, peaceful, this thing. But many people have tired. That is mental weakness. I hear him mentally weak. You are not mentally strong. So, oh, you know, let me tell you, all these powers, they want people that are mentally strong. So that it shows them that, look, what you are doing is very important for you. But once we go back and, nah, 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 wow, not in magazine, nah, nah, wow, you're just like normally, usual average Igbo person. You know, they forget. They, you know, they become discouraged because you are not mentally tough. And that is why you keep on being enslaved, enslaved by others that are mentally tough. The Fulanese are highly mentally tough. They maintain their, they maintain their policy. They maintain their focus from 
till, since 200 years plus till today. Can you do that? Ask yourself, can you do that? You continue fighting and after you transfer it to your children, your children, children, your children, 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 do you think it's easy? Oh, him ne jeme me msim na na me kwendi admire because uh, uh, you wanted their type of mentality. You wanted their type of mentality. I know dunyan di na gana o hia na aba na aga mosquito na abobu am am di ya na ebuku ebu na ebu ha they don't care. But all of them are working in tandem. No one can you do that. Over small thing you become discouraged. Na now we are seeing as I want to say for now they see him on Facebook. Nah, no, they hear him again. Nah. Only you have an excuse because you need good life, but good life that you can never live. The real good life is having control over our collective destiny. There is nothing proud like that. Look at UAE, they are imposing 640,000 naira visa fee application fee. Not a guarantee that they will give you visa. How do you think that any citizen of UAE will feel? They feel like they are demigod. If any UAE, you have any UAE friend, oh, you want to lick his ass so that he will help you to get visa. How proud will you feel if you are in his shoes? We have our Biafra where people are trying to come. Where people are paying huge amount of money trying to come to work. How will you be? How proud will you be? Just imagine yourself. You see. But uh, can you do what they did? That's the big question. Can you be mentally tough in order to pass through what they did? In order to go, do you are seen shining? It passed through the, 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 the fire. It passed through fire. It passed through fire before he molded, started the police being policed and start shining. And you are you are proud that you are wearing gold. That is like that. What we always see is the end product without trying to understand, trying to imagine, or trying to see what they did. This is what IPOB is trying, is trying to imbibe in our mentality to be mentally tough so that we take care of our we restore a country that we can be in charge of our destiny many forces have said britain created nigeria they vowed that we are not going to take charge of our destiny that we are lower human beings after they gave us on to the full full and also vowed that Ahmad bello said that they will never allow us to be in charge of our destiny double what is facing us is double wahala Double, if not triple, wahala. Now, do you think that we are going to get uh, to our destination through Abakata? We will stop and start giving excuses. Now, I see the condition. Now, wow. Now, you see what happened. I say it that we, Igbos, we have, we always have one million excuses to justify our failure. But IPOB will not. We will not trade that pattern. I say, I. We fail, we fail, we take responsibility like that Kenyan person. But we are not going to fail. There is no excuse that justifies failure. Nothing that justifies failure. Nothing. Oh, no, I look I look three years. No, I go go your one. That's why you failed. Nothing more. Stop. You failed. Stop giving excuse. People fought for 39 years. Look at Palestine now. They have been fighting since how many decades? Since 19, 19, 1948. They have been fighting till today. When they have their, their country, now you start applying for visa to go there. But you don't know what they pass through. When it reaches your side, you say, nah, nah, wow. you cannot pass through what they pass. Are you a human being? Let us stop giving excuses of failure. Failure, failure. Uh, yeah, this, and you give excuse because you are weak. We have no, no... No reason to fail. We have no reason to fail. IPOB, we have no reason to fail. That is why Biafra remains our religion. It remains who we are. It remains everything concerning us. It remains our ideology. Therefore, fasten your seat belts because we must continue. There is no failure. Thank you for listening. From me, Maz, Jonathan Chinidu, from here, 
it is simply good evening. <laughs> Anything from the go comprehensive medical examination. So, and also they recommended some drugs and every other thing, which I may not be able to mention at this point. So, and um, those far reaching medical investigations to be conducted didn't take place immediately because you know one thing about we and the SSS, we, when the when recommendations in there is made, you write them, notify them, it takes weeks before they will start doing those tasks, they're complying. So, or probably calling, calling them out before they will start complying. So, the, the letter medical investigation, uh, was conducted, I was about a month ago. So, and, uh, I was in any of these, Process exercise. I used to be part of it because he insisted I must always be available to the show, to witness and see what was what was being done. So we visited about two different medical facilities where this um, examination took place. So they told me when I met when I asked questions them that some of these results has to be taken overseas, and then um, it will take about two weeks before it to be uh, ready and made available to him. However, when I raised them, um, when it became obvious of me that them. Um, this is not coming up, uh, coming out as we expected, or as the two I was, two, I was told. So I issued a statement that was um, a statement I issued last week. Uh, so and part of the concerns I raised in that statement was the fact, the delay in making these findings available to Mars and Namibia. So I can also undergo the recommendations contained therein. So probably for eight hours after raising that uh, concerns, I got a call from the uh, from his doctors that um, the Medical reports is available. So, and then um, that communication has also been, uh, 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 filed before the SSS. So anyone from now will be meeting with him. So, to discuss the findings and the uh, other solutions available. And probably after that, um, uh, meeting, I also make available as we come the world and also much in the extent of what we have done and uh, what is being discussed or what, uh, solutions are built upon. So, as far as the medical issue is concerned, so this is where we are now, as regards to his medical condition. I'm hopefully, and hopefully, I will see him any moment from this time. So, I will not be able to mention the date and time. But as soon as I finish meeting with him, I will make it available to to the world about the outcome of that meeting. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Barista. Uh, thank you for that clarification, um, which means he's a medical. Uh, Health, health condition is improving. Uh, it's not um, maybe deteriorating as it was before. Uh, I think that is what I will get from there. Uh, but uh, he still needs uh, more attention medically. I don't know if I'm right. Yeah. Ex exactly. All right. Okay. Uh, let's take another question. Uh, Barista. Barista, I hope you can hear me. I'm hearing you very loud and clear. All right. All right. Okay, um, let's come to the D-Day now regarding the issue the, um, the, on 15th of this month, 15th of this month, uh, which is the uh, Supreme Court um, uh, ruling. 
we know that you have passed through tough time and a lot of things has happened in defending our leader, uh, Mazi Nandikano and the IPOB. This is your right as a legal practitioner in Nigeria, but uh, we understand what is behind it. Uh, what is the expectation? What is the expectation? What is the expectation will it be uh, regarding that day on the judgment? What do you, uh, uh, by the dear friends, what are we going to see? What do you think is what we are going to, what is our expectation on that day? Okay, thank you. Um, it's very unfortunate that um, we operate a system where people are asking questions of this nation. We operate a system where people are begging the the begging an arm of government to respect court orders and also to do the needful. Um, it's important at this point in time to make this clear. So I've repeatedly said it in some of my press releases and interviews granted to mainstream media in Nigeria. Uh, but uh, I wish I could in a very low manner so people understand what I'm saying. As as very unfortunate as it is, Mazen Nambikano's case is first of its kind in this country. We are a court of superior decision in this case, Court of Appeal, Intermediate Court of Records, delivered a judgment and Directed for a citizen to be released unconditionally, one, for there to be no further trial on any form of indictment concerning that citizen, for there to be no further detention for some other citizen. Then the government went on appeal. Without going into the merits or otherwise of the appeal, this has never happened before since the history of my practice of it as a lawyer in this country. As a matter of fact, there's no legal decision, there's no legal decision, there's no decided authority that authorizes a state to appeal, to file appeal of this nation. Because the law is right and clear. When a citizen who is being prosecuted or who is being, yes, prosecuted on a criminal matter is discharged, in the circumstances in which Mazen Namnikano was discharged, amounted to a quitter, the person will naturally, the person will naturally, assuming the person was in court on the day the pronouncement was made by the, by the, by the court, walk free from that court without being interrupted, intercepted, or arrested by anybody, sent to the house, to his house. This is the system. It, this is how it operates. I've never seen where a court will say we will decide that someone has no case to answer or someone is discharged and acquitted, then the person a government prosecuting will appeal and on top of that continue to return the person. It hasn't happened. Now, a charge was brought against him before the Federal High Court. On application on application led by Professor Michael Zekomet team. The court struck out eight count charge out of the 15 count charge. Unsatisfied with many counts, an appeal was filed against the many seven count charge. Prior to that respondent, the appeal was argued on the merit. And the court upheld our appeal and consequently struck out the many seven count charge. The court did not only struck out the many count charge, the court is charging them become of any further indictment. Even the, and even after striking another seven contract, the court proceeded to rule to direct the federal government to release them unconditionally. The court further proceeded to direct the federal government not to entertain, not to file any charge or indictment against the Muslim American in any court in Nigeria. Ordinarily, what's suspected in the circumstance is for the federal government to comply with the other court. Without further ado. But it's important for me to also mention that when this was going on, 
when this one goes now, when that judgment was delivered, the government take two far-reaching steps to circumvent the judgment delivered by the Court of Appeal. One, on that day, this one was delivered, being 13th of October, 2022. The federal government, federal government went to St. Court, federal high court, and filed a fresh charge against Mazin and And when this fresh charge was filed against him, it was given to the press to announce in their usual manner. And it was, uh, it was uh, widely published. We are not served with this charge. Now, two, they filed an application to stay the execution of judgment delivered by the Court of Appeal. So, on the following, on the following day, when we are, when the court, when the matter was slated for a report of the outcome of the proceeding before the court of appeal, the following week, we went to court. Then the court was also giving the judgment of the court of appeal that said, you should not be tried before any court. You should not be further detained. You should be further, it should be released unconditionally. Then the court said, I don't have jurisdiction to detain the charge. Okay, let us, let us have the charge. They didn't have the charge. And the court constable so carry that pressure they file against him. That's number one. Number two, they file an application to stay the execution of the judgment of the court of appeal. And I've mentioned it here. I've said it to several forums. I've also said it in various Nigerian media houses. That there's no legal authority, both statutory laws or case laws, that authorize the stay, stay in the execution of a judgment that's Discharge and in the circumstance of that judgment, I put a series of crimes indictment against him. This an application to stay the execution of the judgment was purely predicated on civil provisions of the Court of Appeal rules. Civil provisions of the Court of Appeal rules. No criminal provision, because what we are talking about is criminal proceedings before the Court of Appeal. And courts sitting by, hand, uh, uh, presented over by a different panel this time around, granted this unprecedented order. We then proceeded. Then appeal, the appeal against the court of appeal. Then the court, then the on a different panel, now before a different panel, the court granted the order, staying the execution of the court of appeal. Now, when this was done, the federal government went to sleep. They practically, they practically abandoned the appeal before the Supreme Court. They didn't file the appellate brief within the time specified by the same court. That court that granted order had a time, set a time limit within which the federal government is to file the appellate brief and transmit it. They didn't file, they didn't file the appellate brief. As a matter of fact, the records, the transmit of records to, to the same court was done at our own prompting because they abandoned everything and left. Because what their intention is to keep now, they can pursue it. Special distinction before the NSSS. The compilation of the record of the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court was done at our own prompting. They didn't file appellate brief within the time stated in the ruling, the, 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 the ruling delivered by the, by the. In fact, as a matter of fact, as sounds today before the government didn't deliver, coming up next week, the government didn't serve us the appellate brief, the first file. They didn't serve us that process because we got it via an application for satisfied to copy to the of the of the closing court before we were able to, to be given a copy of what they filed. And we responded. We responded. All this we articulated in process of the file before the Supreme Court. And was is exhaustively argued by, by Professor Michael Sekome during the address. So, uh, when the matter came up for hearing, we have a lot of applications, so many applications, pre applications before the Supreme Court. One for transfer, transfer to a correctional center pending the termination of the appeal. Two, bail. Three, for medical, uh, for, for, um, for, uh, medical, uh, for, for, that was just to see him. So this application, in line with the extant rules of the court and practice, we are all disposed of. Then, and also an application for extension of time to, to what it called to file their appellate with the file act of time, and also an application to regularize what they file. So on that day, 
They also came up with another application which was served on us a day before the day set for the hearing. What is this application about? Application to amend their grants of appeal and also to deem the one the grants of appeal amended as properly filed as fact. When we look at this application before the court, then I seek my also. After we, we put our heads together, we, uh, we understand that the essence of what they are doing is to buy time. It's to buy time because there was no difference between what they filed before and what they are asking the court to amend for this, or what they are seeking court to amend. It's just to buy time. And we said, no problem. Go on. We're not opposing. Go on. Go on. We're not opposing the application. So we can be able to put in the, the, our response, amend our response to accommodate what they uh, to, to reflect our direct response to what they have filed. So that was done, and the matter was done for hearing. On the date he came up for hearing, they told the court that they were unable to respond to our reply brief. Despite the fact that they have sufficient time to do that, even, the, even while coming to court, they came with a, a draft copy of what they have. Let's say, Professor Michael Zekome, all the court allowed them a standard to enable them filing. The, the, to never file what they have in court. They said, no, they, even if a standard is granted, they cannot be able to file all this process. They went to a time. So the matter was kind of like John for to adjourn for this hearing. Unfortunately, this matter came up. Came up, it was it would come up for this hearing. The court was on vacation. The court was subsequently adjourned for this hearing. And as God they have it, it has been had a waiting judgment. So what I'm telling what I'm trying to say in effect is that in a system where there is suspect for rule of law, where rule of law is supreme, I don't think we we'll have any business before the Supreme Court in the first place, whatsoever. I don't think the federal government has any, any business going to the Supreme Court to challenge the decision of the Court of Appeals, the of the Court of Appeals, without reasoning as an ambition. So these are concurrent findings from a federal court to the Court of Appeals, appeal. and exactly. Judgment of the Court of Appeal is a unanimous judgment by the three judges of the Court of Appeal. Unanimous judgment delivered by three judges that sat on the matter. I know how difficult it is. It is to obtain it. Yeah, but the judge has to decide that I know how difficult it is. It is to obtain it. A judgment for the Court delivered by the Federal Court also upheld and further two judgments delivered by the five, two parallel judges of the Court of Appeal. So, what we are urging the Federal Government and the Supreme Court to do is simple. We are there on law. Appeal has been filed. The shun be given on law. We don't want any form of political influence on the other. And I believe most strongly that the Supreme Court will do justice to the judgment of the court, judgment coming up on Friday next week. My expectation, I don't think I've lost confidence in judiciary. I don't think so. Some people are insinuating the otherwise, but I don't think so. Because if I've lost confidence in judiciary, I don't think that I'll sponsor a child, my first child, who's reading law today in the university. I won't ask her to go and read law. I'll ask her to go and read other courses. But I believe I have some hope and some confidence in the parent that sat on this matter. And I believe that justice will serve. Now the kind of today is being detained unconditionally, unconstitutionally, illegally, and in gross violation of his extant rights of contain the constitution. So I don't think that my learned justice of the Supreme Court will look other way. When the laws kick, otherwise, I have so much confidence in them, and I believe that this will serve come 15th of December 2023. And I want to urge every one of us to remain steadfast and calm, believing that justice will be served. Nam Bekana has suffered. He has been, he has been, he has been tortured emotionally and otherwise. Today, I, I don't want to go into sentiment. Because if I say the same thing, you're saying, you know, if Nam the Khan is from the north, it, this will not be happening. If it's from the south, this thing will not be happening. We are seeing cases where someone was arrested in another state, another country. And upon the assumption of office by the, by the, by, by the president of this country today, a few months after, he was released. And today he's registering for you, a nation. Today he's asking for that. So he's released. So if I say, I may not be, I may not be faulted. If I'm, if I'm to say that now they can't be in the today because I need man. Simple. I, I don't want, I don't want to be forced to but, I'm, but that, that has to be said. I may not be forced to say that he's been detained, been tortured, been kept in the worst form, been exposed to all forms of human degradation where he's been detained, 
because Sadi of course was an evil man. I will, I will not be faulted. Because this, uh, the, 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 the facts are there. So what I'm urging, urging the flag of the, what I'm urging the Jewish well, I'm not, I don't, I don't think, I don't want to believe that the executive will have influence over the judgment of 15th of December. I don't want to believe that. I want, I want to believe most strongly that my confidence of the judiciary and my knowledge of the Supreme Court remain unshaken and strong. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Barrister. Uh, thank you, uh, Barrister. Uh, let me ask you this question also uh, regarding your experiences uh, so far um, and what you have passed through. And uh, the pre presently, do you have any uh, visible threat? Is there any threat uh, since you, since all these things have going on, and um, uh, the experience you have experienced regarding the threats? Do you have anything to tell us, mostly on threat, uh, threatening your life? Are you free? Are you free like other lawyers practice, exercise, uh, practicing your field in the zoo in Nigeria? Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Um, I believe this is a very important platform and um, a very terrible platform too, indeed, to state, um, to give a chronology of um, my participation and involvement of, in this case so far. So I'll be a friend who has been asking me questions. Uh, please, uh, we need uh, you to give us account of your involvement, your involvement in the case, how far you have gone, what, um, how do you come in, come into this case? First of all, I want your friend to know this part because I'm going to be kind of, the way they are comprehensive in my, in my analysis, because I don't think I've been able to say this thing before, uh, before, or formally in any public forum, but it's important for how, how we started, an overview of how we started to be given facts. Why? Because I'm involved, and how I got involved, and how far I've gone since then. To that end, I want to state that I came into this matter in 2015. 2015 was when I came into this matter. And I didn't, I was not consulted. I was not consulted immediately when Namdekan was arrested from Lagos. Arrested in Lagos and Bota, but I was not consulted. But usually I have a practice then that the practice has also remained, uh, remained regular. That before, at the end of every vacation, annual vacation, I usually conduct post proceedings by going to prison or the police to get some people who have been unlawfully detained and also handle their matter and get them out without collecting one night out there. So I have this person they call Samuel White. He was detained at the first year in Abuja here for almost eight years. So during such visit I met him and he gave me account of what happened told me the facts of his case and how they kept him here from they brought him from Tefi, detained him from detained him at the um, Tefi police headquarters before bringing him back to OCID here. So I immediately contacted the people who I have handled the matter and also they refused to uh, grant him bail. So I filed an application before Abuja High Court here for his fundamental right enforcement. Then he was um when, upon being served with process of file in his court, in, in Abu Chahai court, the police transferred him immediately to Kefi prison and slung him with charge that brothers on kidnapping and robbery and all whatnot. Because police know how to fabricate and, and fabricate and, and file, come up with a revolver studies once they want to detain someone. So I followed them to Kefi, where that charge was filed. And because then they really transferred him Upon the filing of the time, he to back to Kefi and the time, and he was returned at the Kefi prison. So I followed them. I filed an application to challenge the competence of the child and everything. So the application was hard. On the day judgment was delivered, the was delivered. I was in court personally to listen to Alice to take the judgment along with my two of my staff. Judgment was delivered and Samuel, Samuel White was released. That is a short and long story of it. Before I leave the court, he came to me. That paper is still with me today because in the course of time, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do, uh, 
do I'll do uh, I'll, I'll do a note on this on this uh, case because of time. Those are, are meant to be known by the public actually. So the he gave me a scribbled out something, someone wrote something and gave him. And the guy is from Plateau State. His name is Balafutu. Balafutu told him to ask him that he dreamt in the night before they came to court that first of all, you will release on that morning. Two, that I'm the one to bring him out. And I asked my junior that came along with me. I said, well, let us go to see this guy. They said, they saw his tomb. I said, no, let's go and see him. So they round followed me to the prison. Where I was there waiting for my turn to be called upon to come and see him. I saw persons who are members of my prison. They told me about what happened in Wusa 2, where Onyendema's man kind of was being, was to, when he was brought to court, and how police arrested over 120 persons. I came from southeast, from the east, to show to show solidarity with them, with him. And many of them were detained in prison custody there. Kifi and some women among them were detained elsewhere. So then I said, please, can I help you? I said, ah, why? Well, I don't know for people. I said, I said, don't worry, I said, I've been doing it for other people. Don't worry, I'm going to get the book. So in the course of that discussion, they called me to come and see Balafutu. I left them. So I got to, after meeting with Balafutu, I left. Balafutu has been detained was returned in prison, came prison for 13 years without, without trial. So, but he has been, of course, he has been released for the past, uh, most of uh, the years and has, has gone. I'll be selling the left. I'm done with the case, actually. So, I also did it pro bono. So, I, did, I was unable to exchange numbers with these guys and I left. So, on my way, I was like, I was unable to get these guys' number. How can I contact them? Well, I need to go back to prison to get this information. So, we are just discussing this. Approaching AYA in Abuja here, my phone rang. Because you know, when you want to visit someone in prison custody, you need to give them your particulars, your name, your phone numbers, and all. So when this guy came out, they now, they looked for my phone numbers and got it and called me. I said, hey, thank God, thank God. People should push to my office and let's find, let's do something about this. So the long and short story was that two days after, I appeared for this person. In a chat number, see, I'm one, three, Slash 215, between Commission of Police Resources, Abu Moses, and 120 others. That's the name of the case. So 120 others means that those that were affected by Abin the term, we are 120 persons. To be across. They brought them with, uh, on a, they brought them on a, in a, on a two black Maria vehicle. So, that morning. So I wasn't caught. I, the, their case was mentioned. My submission lasted for, one hour, 30 minutes, two hours, this day, so for their bear, for their, um, for the matter to be struck out and, uh, for them to be decided and struck out. So, and the person appearing for the police responded, the court rules for about 30 minutes to come back and deliver it. There, the court discharged them and struck out the charge and all of them left. I never collected one naira from anybody on this. Then, when, out of, uh, of course, you know, with relation and all whatnot, I left my office. Uh, Mazi Onyenduka was an in-law. Uh, also came to my office to thank me and all, all some other persons. Thank me for what happened. So, uh, I was there when his phone rang in my office. Then, last said it before, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, who is the person? I say, Mazi, uh, Mazi's wife wants to speak with me. That's Lolo, uh, Uche Shukano, Excellency. So I said, okay, let me talk. I can, I can remember what he said. He said, Marissa, how are you? I said, fine. I said, madam, good morning, good afternoon. So after saying those three answers, I said, barrister, I want to tell you something. I said, what happened? He said, barrister, I want to tell you, good afternoon, I want to tell you today that you are the one who's going to bring out my husband from detention. You are going to get involved in this case. I said, which case? He said, the main case before the federal high court. You are the one to bring out my husband from detention. Move him now and bring him out. I look at the, the in-law. I said, okay, madam, no problem. I will, I will do my best. Then, before proceeding, actually, I had told my client, told only the man in the camera to warn his brothers, not to mention my name on a platform before now. Now, as, as, as I speak to you now, I said, because any day they'll mention my name in platforms, I'll mention their names. So, to tell to them to, to, to desist from mentioning my names in any social media platforms, because I know they are creating a lot of problems for me. I know what they are doing against me at my back. And I've been telling him all those facts. So, but I wouldn't want a social media by any of them would mention my name on any political, on a social media platform. 
I told him to tell them to want them to stay away from me. So, um, then I've not, for the first time, met with Nnamdi Kano. I've not seen him. I've not, um, I've not even been in that court. I last told you, with my father in law, what are we going to do now? I said, I've not seen this guy. Because I need to see the guy to file a petition for his defense. So he will rush the court, get a copy of the charge, and brought to me. So I prepared an application for his bail. Very well digital application for his bail. As soon as I got involved in this case, Kinsley started sponsoring all forms of defamatory publications against me. Sets of all kinds. He also released my phone number on, on, on radios. People were calling, threatening me. Tagging me, he tagged me, it's about what I have come to poison in Barista, sorry, uh, Barista, sorry, if I may uh, direct a bit, um, this one you are saying, uh, involving Kinsley, uh, is it 2015 when you, uh, when Onyendu was, um, first, um, arrested in uh, yes, Lagos? Yes. As yes, a then, yes, yes. As a, was it then or this present one? Then? Then, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm, I want to, I started from the beginning for you to understand. The prejudice I've suffered so far in this case. I'm just giving clear account of what I've suffered. All right. Go, and where I'm to where we have to be. Go ahead. I just so, want to. So, that was 2015. So, he released my numbers to, on Radio Biafra and those other, some other places who were calling me on phone. Threatening that they're going to kill me, that I'm sabotaging. I told Madame at some point, I said no. That I'm tired. Even now, people were expressing concern. That I said, you're following this case. Uh, so nobody will kill you. I said, I don't know. But Madame was insisting. They also went as far as sponsoring publication before Nigerian print medias. Calling Onye Numas and Namekano's names, unprintable names, on social media, that uh, this and that. And it took, it took her personally written letters. One, two, four of attorney for me to be involved. Two, before, before, before she can even publish anything, on radio, on, on social media, on print medias, they demanded from her that she demonify them against what she's publishing, what they are publishing, and she signed them. So, and that letter, those letters, and the handwritten letter she wrote, she insisted that she wants me, or the father-in-law, to show it to her husband. Any day she's coming to court, he's coming to court. That once her husband sees that letter, that the rest will be story. And that was what happened. That was really what happened. Well, at the time we are talking about this now, the then lawyer who was involved in the matter, and also the seven you are telling the world that Nam Mekano was perfectly well, that is doing well, being well fed and all what not, when unknown to them that Nam Mekano was bleeding from the nose at the point he was detained at the SS custody. Was bleeding at the point in, he was detained at the SS custody. So, and he was able to see him once, only once. Was able to, I mean, the lawyer in the world was able to see him once. But you come out and tell the world that he was doing well, that, uh, that uh, he's doing well fed, drinking good water, and they're sleeping well and waking up well. So, but I don't want to go into that. So, and eventually we came into this matter. When Namde, when Onyendo Mazanaka saw the letter, the handwritten letter from the wife, and I asked me in court, are you a job? I said, yes, a job. Look at me and said, a job. Oh, yeah, you yeah, are yeah, part of this case. Call the rapper, you don't call him. And that's when the entire stop problem started. That was when the entire problem started. Because me, my hands are clean. I don't know if you are, if you are doing anything at my back. I don't know. I want, I don't want to know. Depending on what you have in mind, I don't want to know. I don't care to know. So, we got involved. And I discovered that this case is not a case we can go on with, without involving a Sinavo case. I contacted my uncle, who is the season Sinavo case chief, chief Sumoma SN. I said, come and join us and lead us in this case. Because a lot of interest at stake, a lot of people are interested. And the, Let's have a, a, an Iroko that will lead us. Just more, more of SAN, free from Abba to join us. It was on his application in court. And interestingly, on the day this application was about to be made by Chusumo, for Nam the to be transferred from Esther Custody to prison uh, facility. The lawyer in the matter objected when we were discussing it among the lawyers. He said, no, but he want the matter I want, uh, he is there, he wants him to stay the man in this Esther I have to go to him. I went to him and said, uh, Oyin, please, we have an issue here. Um, we are discussing something that will take place in court now. He said, what, what is that? I said, we are about to make an application for you to be transferred to prison custody. 
instead of staying where you are. And I now said to him the advantages of being there. He said, Joe, what am I talking about? Is anybody objecting? I said, yes, you are right. You are right. That business has said you will not go there. You are very, you are very comfortable where you are. I said, Joe, no, 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 no. They should, have, should go on with the application. In open court. And I told you, please, go on. And upon that application being made, granted, when you know, was transferred to prison custody. And the rest became story. Everything that was happening at his back, he became to, you came to know about. So, this is, um, I, I'm taking it one after that for you to understand, uh, the level, uh, the level of involvement, how far we have gone and where we are as of today. Now, when the charge was, the charge filed against Mazinan Kano, suffered several, several amendments, suffered further amendments, because when they file, when you, when they file, of course, you know how frivolous the application, the charges are. When they file the application, the charge, they will, they will, on the next day, what's your day? They will, they will amend it and bring another one. So, but I was basically, when they file an amended last charge, then we file an objection challenging the competence of the charge, because the charge cannot be supported by the providence, what they call providence in support of the charge. They are all frivolous and unfounded charges. Bogus as it may be, then. Then on 28 February 2017, the court ruled on application of appeal objection challenging the competence of the charge. And consequently, so cast count charge out of 11 count charge. Then remaining five. Then, based on this, um, based on the change, the character of the charge and the case, we also filed a federal application to get him out, to, or, or to get him out. So, and that application was had. By the court on the merit, and on the 5th of April 2017, the court admitted him to bail. So, and we promptly ensured, because on the day he was granted bail, that was, that would be on that day, or about, or Thursday. I assured him that and the candle would be released in the next 24 hours. We followed everything up, our people came in in their numbers, whatever we needed, they provided it. Both landed. Uh, uh, documents and all what not, all what, all those hard conditions we are met with. Then on Friday, on Friday, he was released. So, now, upon, upon his abduction from Kenya, of course, we are aware of what happened in him, what, what, what happened to him, because when he was on April 2017, the court adjourned his matter to October 14th for hearing. Then, Within the, that intervening period, when he was enjoying the bad condition, he underwent uh, several pre-trial briefing with me. I went, I went to his house and also we came to my house, which of course, of course, is the public domain. And we had several discussions about uh, the preparations towards full trial going on, on 11th of, um, of, uh, uh, of October. So within this intervening period, of course, you know what happened. The federal government, through their Operation Pilot House, Went to kill him because the essence of that operation was uh, to eliminate him, not because of any other thing. They went there to kill him, and uh, on between 10th and 14th of September 2017, and within this period of time, within that 10th and 14th, over 30 persons were killing his premises. It's by out of providence that he was able to escape being killed. Of course, those facts are before, before, before the public and also before the court. So now, when he was abducted in Kenya. He, and before he says, well, on an admission to Nigeria. We got to know about that when he was taken to court. We are not informed. Federal government never to informed us or notified us that our clients was being brought to court at that time. Then, when he was taken to court, it became a matter of public knowledge. The press reported it and all of not. And then um, we came. So, and immediately I came, we went to court. Decide as to best approach to handle the to handle the matter. I weekly I I I I quickly formed kind of um, a team of lawyers and also set up a WhatsApp group where I included almost very prominent and uh, learned uh, lawyers, uh, lawyers from across Ibo and also we are also have some senior advocates there, I have some uh, professors there. So, and I asked everybody, including those who are also in the matter now, so I uh, do not ask for him. So I, I like matters for him. I asked everybody to make a contribution for review of the charge just filed against him or the manner in which was 
and I'm abducted and brought into Nigeria. Make a contribution, be fit for you, and make a contribution. I, I eventually called for a meeting of lawyers in my office, and the, the came thought out. And we had a very robust discussion as to what and what we had to do, and that push to be adopted to ensure that we get we get what we want in court. So it was it was even based on contribution made by Professor Odinkalo. Odinkalo is part of this team. Was a, also, it was in this platform. So hey, I wanted not to mention his name, but, it, but I don't think there's anything uh, that will send me from mentioning his name. He makes very robust contribution and they introduced a very important uh, aspect of um, SO, uh, that has to do with personal edition and also advertised attention to that. And the same new materials and them, other authorities and legal authorities that were sisters. And I quickly, I built our case along that one and also discussed, dealt entirely with the with the frivolity of the charge and the and the emptiness of the charge to so, unfile um, our our objection challenging the competence of this charge. So when that was served the federal government, also I believe I've made it for, I also made it public there. So the the they respond until a few days before the state started for the for his arraignment, they now responded to the charge. And because uh, I would have told the court, these people file a response to our objection. A day before the day we are coming to court, we are supposed to supposed to respond by way of reply. What have you to what reply? So and um, the court said no. They have to give us time to reply. On this I don't believe they amended the charge again. So they keep on amending the charge. However, during this my visit to Union Bazinamikano during this period to SSS, I visited him because uh, then a lot of us you know what happened before that time. I'll I'll still come to that later. So my house was invaded and my PA was killed. And um however, unfortunately, that my PA that was killed, uh the father died early this morning. So maybe so, so that's in peace. I'll come to that later. So and I went to see him and I had a discussion with him. I said first person he mentioned to me he said, Is your phone? Please, I want you to go to Professor Michael Zekome to tell him I want him to be part of this case, to lead this team. That was in July 2021. I went to Michael Zekome, was Michael Zekome, and I told him what he had to say. He said it just. Jofo, please, I want you to go to Professor Michael Zekome to tell him I want him to be part of this case, to lead this case. That was in July 2021. I went to Michael Zekome, it was Michael Zekome, and I told him what Onye had said. He said it before. Yes. Please, I want you to go to Professor Michael Zekome to tell him I want him to be part of this case. That was in July 2021. I went to Michael Zekome, it was Michael Zekome, and I told him what he had to say. He said it before. Please, I want you to go to Professor Michael Zekome to tell him I want him to be part of this case, to lead this team. That was in July 2021. I went to Michael Zekome, it was Michael Zekome, and I told him what he had to say. He said it before. Please, I want you to go to Professor Michael Zekome to tell him I want him to be part of this case to lead this team. That was in July 2021. I went to Michael Zekome, it was Michael Zekome, and I told him what he had to say. He said it before. Please, I want you to go to Professor Michael Zekome to tell him I want him to be part of this case to lead this team. That was in July 2021. I went to Michael Zekome, it was Michael Zekome, and I told him what Onye had to say. He said it before. But we are back. Um, while you are talking, I wanted to force you to throw this question to you to clarify. And I also want to plead if we can um as well Sony Bo Makandine Makiku if a basaram 
um nka nkita na akpotu um umu no nye ndu aha ema ni hie maybe go a lot of things na na nibo kama no nye bo nye hmm kama no nye bo nye i don't know mo ga dey mu be possible all no ga dey mu possible we continue i age all no ga dey possible i continue with you but now if it will be possible mo ane mix ye mix ye maka ndi na enwe ndi na ana ha water charm ema no no gura akwa fuma fuma when the naga ha ota chacha umu iba gasi ota go eh but is that the question i just want to the question i want to throw why you are talking about uh, what happened in 2015 um how um uh, uh, kinsley the us car release when you do whatever i want a lawyer i want one lawyer i want one lawyer and a poor vincent to better that time or you want put the law is it or you and hana go on there Somebody should uh, be on mute, please. Hold on, let me mute someone. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 okay, thank you. That's one of them. The point in the men has made it that time, but now, okay, okay, we don't need to go to the authority. I'm I'm done at the matter. I made the case. After I'm up that child, one twenty percent of the members are put in the ten on lockdown and prison custody. Welcome, Sam. Now, let's make your phone. I said your fucking age. I'm sim. Would you see again? The alumac all on go. In the importa, where some call one lay here. If your phone number are put there, dear from then she. No one has a one cut now. If my one iPhone, I phone is enough for more. So some no more are put there, dear to a cost of one. See, I want to bother, madam, not to bother. I hear in the melon bills on Kaya and Yay. So some can let some mumbana who work at a camp up there. Then there were when I'm there in my office. There was some most of the money they can for charge now. I finally, uh, my county and the company I can move to Malo how to do my work. So, but it's there without them, but they so those when they so those are young so they were talking here. They prepare how to where they sit here in a court. You know, I go about now. Oh, girl, but I'm not a case. I'm proper, mazi. Yes, with the number, the telephone number. Tio no wani ne gwa hana mo gwo nyori na mo bele bu na obo no na bara government e gwo na nka mbia bo nwa ndi e I was a part na court na to Paris if an 2015 obro kwa nke e kita na nke 2022 yes. 2023 go 2015 eh na go go bido I was a part I was first fell at part na court obo sha na court onye ndi court I was a part on 23 of December 2015 na court patrum trum trum sin da mo kan kan gbasin kete na de kan te wosina ma ege sake no wosi unye Mama ngazi, osini wuna maga. Omeja publication, apu apu dina song, oni yamu hende uku. Omeja publication de ebobona. Deno ndi na kesi nando tiri noka publication onke. Pana na me bobona na 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 mo bobo ndori na mpele budi. Angwa ne hawo ke. So wa kwa ni uma na apa. Sina hamaro ni wamo nabro ni hamabro ni ndamde. I don't want to go into that sense. So then the point is ina buna. Omeja hende na wuni edao ko wuni msimu gusi edi oni ipe. And go see you know the idea of our code dela no kuno kan ina ye di ina na poto ye di bo she de li be munye ne eh we mbata na code no lo so oga oga o bata go mbo mbo nye ndo no go na code that mbata se mbata mbata because i have ya na agwa nde ya mbata na ya mbata mbata se mbata so ndi ku straight and the fear ndi ku ke na se ura agwa ni o fra na e ma na handle to munye o se mo o munye de le ha se ya se mo o mo abale se fine job o se yet Assume you know you will be normal, you know better, better to them. So then the uh, it was um, the arrangement could not go on. They don't want they couldn't go on with the arrangement. I don't know what happened that day, so he left. Then oh god, the second time, I'm was the I was meeting. That was when I called Ogun Bolu, uh, Chief, uh, Chief Small, my SN, for one night working. When I said I joined, I barely died because I'm from Kassam, not the matter. So say I barely could die. Chief Small, my SN, just yeah. I went meeting. So that's how they don't process. Then there, that was something. What even delayed that only in the for that time? Who can file that motion for bail? Then I may agree. I may agree. Now Mr. Raimel, with the Obeta and Doti. Now that motion for bail and file it. Are they more competent to be agreed? So sit up here. I better the guy will do and can't file it. So I question. First of all, we came on that day. Yeah, we have one. And Google, the Google Home came up to me and do. I put a go from SS custody, boy, because no one do was not feeling, was not looking good. Then, 
o beta na agba fọ won enter order si na onye ndu na akara na onye ndu na ebe ono de mma we si oku de make agreement any make court si no kan be onye nda oku make na eba kan je meti je kwesi onye ndu na no gbori se chokan jo si nke fọ si na na ti oku na achoka akpọlu oku je na prison si se be no puta na na ma no beta na kwa na ebe no ma mi na le ga nyo ofma ni na ele nyo ofma na ngo mmeri na e ka ape na na eh na na no of me ba na na you want comfortable room be na no we need some what say na here na wasim ko yekure so beta wasim e jofo please i dey move up the station cap up here ba what you say gone he have struck go me na court no no kun for na wakata here me na kun court she move with the petition i can so need to please the rest the game story on all the other prison no matter name here name leba be keep again because na the man na be na say na we no because in kima e man so go enwe lo so when we which is very prepared on the part of our government and the GND the military high court around it now buna obu no nye ndu ana ho na prison okuru kan ni fu ne mandira to as mandira ezori mandira man tan me mbo ko na forge document never of this we know how opportunity of doing that because why am i am going to tell you why am i but because na they want to get the restricted so you wanna you wanna never in that where you go like tell me na what you could have get the stand that where this and then when it became obvious to them now no na ni hende ko ofma ngwa gang ze o so we the full gang up by those who will be telling him the wrong thing so man i don't want to go into that for now so o ga ke message o ye ndu we a transfer a prison custody on other ban i know what could i pop them i mean they charge after i mean they charge then i severely time mean the charge on 20 on 25th of april 2017 court granted that we say na na dey for the be na dey tell me na say October 17 dey offer the about na be around there or the KB dey and about here ah yeah am una na am na eja afia na eja na dey eja afia na eja na o be go na o be na be that time dey betwe i is am una na akpata nkata no na ada na ime then i discuss all case we dey get me na that date October 17 yana yaka na yana 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 pay o pre trial conference with a lawyer but I'll make you pay on that. Again, I'm not somewhere near here. I'm not. I'm not in office. I'm not going to be in a good gas. I'm not going to prepare conference. So we had it in this house. Also had it in my house. And the other day, when I conclude, look, I see the guy in it. On the other hand, one don't go. One day, when you know, deep in Abuja, not for two million people to follow him. He now got the record to tell the world now. Only do your court. He wants to pass the part of that case. He wants to go and defend the Abu. He normally go there. And no go go over that chop that no worry home and nobody hit the highway in the court at all hand there. He returned there with the Nabe between September 10th to 14th. He went on. This is an impression. I don't understand. He made it in Abu. Abu was saying mad Nabe. Was saying the mad. He made it. Maybe he was saying the mad. Only the mad was saying. Then, all the people made it very hard to do because now he had to love him there. I told him, I told him, I feared him. Just like he had a fall here in the mess. Afterwards, eh, no, actually, no, actually, but no, actually, it was there because over there we were to stand for human life. So she didn't give up there. Now, but after that, I can't do no more. I can't do no more. Very well. Then, oh, oh, just go do. Just she didn't come across. Maybe this year, oh, just go do it. Oh, I don't know. Oh, who knows? Actually, they could defend the charge. Yeah. Now, actually, they are still is ready to come and defend the charge. And question to which is the post to have the bit at Israel, sort of Israel. They said to me that expressing his readiness to come and defend this charge, but not until before he will come to defend this charge. Now he wants the court, the judge on the matter, the judge, the final judge, to give him a guarantee that his safety, his, his safety, is guaranteed. Not until court, court where now he can be protected. Now be like that, you know. Because after all, at the point he was in, was enjoying the bail granted him, all court, all all, all is subject of the court. I want a court prosecution. Man, they actually man, no, 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 court grant their bed. They want to give, to kill him. But not only, if at all they discovered, they did at any point in time, there has no end of the offense or committing between the time he was granted bail and the time he has gone, he was enjoying the bed condition. The law says you can amend their charge. Simple. You need to need genuine so. Oh, they caught it. Go and try. Send and car. Oh, go and amend car. No commit to offense in Kenya. I'm into facing Kibwa. I'm into facing Keto. Ah, ah, they are facing me everywhere. I'm in a court. I'm going to talk to you. They are not facing. I'm facing a court. I'm not facing the criminal case. I'm not facing the criminal case. I need to defend this. I'm to tell you now. Actually, 
no offense or committee. How to I may, how to go to our court? How to go? Oh, yes, Let's go. Let me let me let So then I said, go under the, under the peninsula of um, Operation Final Dance. So now, when you was abducted and brought in here, I joke like easy. They keep, they keep, they keep, they keep it near. We do it by now. First of all, I stop at nothing goes to come. That be a police day system. We took us to come from July to December. And within this period, I need a court. We are going to court. And that was the time. Okay, and they make a lawyer from US here. And I hope it's fine. We should not run that way. That was when Bufai came. And Bufai, before he came, he discussed with me that he's coming to see Maz. I said, good. And I told him to say, Bufai is coming to see you. Because before you see him, I must know. To date. So, I told him to say, so this person wants to see you. And he's a lawyer. So, so, and he wants to come and see you and probably discuss with you. When you see him go ahead as your phone and, uh, and the good news, let him come. I personally signed Bruce Fine invitation letter and sent to him for him to come. Bruce Fine now came. When he came, I drove to airport to pick him and took him to where he stayed for those number of days before another. At the end, the airport of California. Then, and then at any time the matter was coming up for hearing, he used to come. He will come. Oh God, that's him. In Kobia. I went, and we're going to see and Bruce Fine, look at the hand, we had a quite only man that has to do protesting to the court. Why they will not allow your lawyer to have, to meet with you? you oh, yeah, have your lawyer in the US. He has the right to see you. So, what happened in court that day is a matter of public knowledge. Bruce Fine has been cleared from the gates, from the gate of the High Court. But I wrote his name. I wrote a letter to the judge, to the court, who approved of him to come to the court. Then Bruce Fine was cleared, even when the SSS were protesting, they, I said, no, he must come in. I picked him. I, I grabbed him and him from the gate of the court. For him to, for, for him to be allowed access into the main court. In the actual Abata court, in the SSS in the court. They refused myself, they never asked to the court. Then I, it became an issue. I ran six, wanted to seek an audience with uh, my lord. But because of the tense session of the environment we had, I ran kept quiet. So we said we are going to formally protest to the court about what they were doing to the spine. We in that little court that time. We in the PNM. We in the was, was, was like, what is happening? Why did not my lord access to me? Then we said, Andrew, look at what the spine advised us to do. Now you protest to the court, formally and civilly, law, in line with the, the calling of our, the, the, our pressure demands. Uh, then, the other fear, Mbolo has seen a ban, Kruna Lawyer Jimako was there too. A lawyer Jimako and also Bariso Wazlike was there, Master Lokala was there, and other lawyers who are there with us. After discussing with Oyendo, 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 that we should protest to the court. And I said, okay, let me go and discuss with lawyers. All of them will sat down. We went outside and had a discussion. At the end of this discussion, I called a lawyer to my concern. What is your opinion about this? Because I know why I asked him that question. What is your opinion about this? The lawyers have agreed we are going to protest the court to express our concerns about the treatment being meted out to, meted to Guspine, who is only in the Muslim international lawyer. A lawyer is, is good. Now, this is a wonderful step. They don't say, no, let us be and you together. I just like I went, I'm not here. I went uh they five could not want that on that system. Let's take him. We went to the back again. We didn't do that. The lawyers have discussed and look at what we are going to do. Do you approve it for you approve of it for the second time? Saying, approved. We left. We outside the court, we got this. When the court 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 came in, I was came in, sat, I done the matter without allowing us access to access to the court again. I walk about she court. Come is to get tell people to say, now nah, I collected his and gun and went outside. I was taking that application that day. No more. He was said that every, every other person. I didn't respond to him. I didn't respond to, I didn't respond to those who are, who are, who are spreading that false narrative that I went to a client. But I was holding myself. I went to a client, and I said, look at what a lot, what, what was being said by them. 
that I, I, I stole a lot in my course with the exam. I didn't allow him to take the application because once he take the application, this and that and all. So then the suit, what? We see me job, I don't want to say I will tell a lawyer to refute it. And that, that never happened because I was in court. The day I'm speaking with you, a lawyer has not refuted it. But I went to him. Because why we need to clarify this in Buna? I don't know when I'll have a opportunity of speaking in this platform. But I'm not speaking. I can speak, but I don't know how soon I will speak in this platform again. And this is a obviously false narrative being peddled by people. They never happened. Just to make us clear. But I don't think I have the you know, opportunity to say it here. So, oh, okay. The, uh, Barista Kini, who, um, cannot to your gas you, um, who connect to Sakwa, um, Oku in the Puketa, like an old impa. Um, they can, I won't go on your, or keep on, Nukon, or keep in Kapotawa, Mbo Agabi, uh, Oga de Kwaman, um, in our Otaka, Kende Potahan, Kekusi, Bia, Kaomo Biafra, what I can, um, can a mem. Um, Omokoram, they keep potro. Diki potoro um a lawyer to my quafa. Nga chwa kan tonyo kwe a ju jwa. Uh on ninth of October on we feed na your Facebook. Isu a lawyer to my has crossed the Rubicon. I am coming out soon. Uh Amarum ke here bu Rubicon a hawk or cross ro. Yekwe ni here bu soon. Soon on wili ke bota ka omu biafra no chan hini ne njo su chikan chikota kwa ni a jua ni ne ni mako kwa ina ko ke kopo cha hancha and cause of kwa Bruce Fenn oga ha obiara uh IPO bi omanya ko wende kwa patara ya na wende jaka fa maka ifeji na ajwa ajwa abu maka kinsele ikpora afa uh, since 2015 kan de ba na awota o wende jaka fa kpota Bruce Fenn obia tu pu ife mere me ko bu uh onye ndu si ya bia oba inwa de nchaje omo ife ndi agasi nga cho nno ke chekota pa ncha na okwu ni ile ile kuga ni rubalista ndi nne na ege nti gesi ko fu ma na edere mi fe ba okay okay one eh who was fine called me i don't know him i have not made contact with him before from us when some people oh when they come on the phone actually not um not to no one and they because i i however before i I, when they called me from U.S. and said someone would call me a lawyer from, I'm the Canada's lawyer would call me from U.S. I said, okay, yeah, the person should call me. I'm going to Bruce Fine. And Bruce Fine also indicated interest about his, uh, um, readiness to come and see him. I said, okay. However, you know, of course, before I take any step, talk about the discuss with only and also pass the message to the, to the, to the, to the U.S. and also, so they can be on the know. And I told him, look at what's he playing now, because, um, someone was coming to see him. So that, because anything that happens tomorrow, I'm going to respond. So, and also, pass limit. Then they, and I said, okay, no problem. Since Sonia don't want to see him, you should come and see him. So, um, as I told you, he, I have to send an invitation letter for him to come. I'm going to send it. I like it. I wrote and sent to him. So, before he was granted visa by the, by the, by, by the, by the government and he came. So, and, uh, he made several attempts to see Onyendo, and this guy said no. No mafia. And in any of this occasion, I ain't not gonna press now, even my rice television, J, uh, J1, D01. Now, only a lawyer named the Canoe, US, yeah, I have here, right? So, 